Hello, everyone. Hi, guys. <laughs> so today we are doing a grocery audit with Gabby, who is from around, she's just north of Houston, Texas. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> poor gal. I, know. I lived in Austin for six months. I can say something. I know, I know the heat and humidity. I know the heat. Yeah. <laughs> There's a reason why we left after six months because I couldn't handle it. All right. Today we're going to do a grocery budget audit for her and show her how she can start saving. And I found 10 things that I wouldn't be buying at Walmart. That she yeah, <laughs> she has. So here right, we go. go. You want to learn Mexican food, but in the easy way, you are in the right place. <laughs> well, hello, friends. Welcome back. I'm Gabby, and you're here in Mexican cooking with Gabby. And today I bring you three amazing recipes that I'm going to do with a raw. Okay, how do you say that word? Hold on. Okay. Rotisserie chicken. That's a hard word. That's a rotisserie. Rotisserie chicken. Anyway, so I went to Costco. I bought this rotisserie chicken. Five bucks. So good. And I was able to make three Mexican meals that I'm going to show you now. Let's get started. Salpicón. Mexican salpicón. Oh my gosh, I can't stop eating this recipe that I'm going to share with you today. Red salsa, Ooh. and of course, I'm sorry, but I have to have sour cream. And because my sour cream is always too thick, I add a little bit of milk and so it can be a little more. And... All right, guys, please welcome Gabby. <laughs> no, what I didn't say is she's a fellow YouTuber. So I was really excited. So, okay, so the the correct name of your channel is Mexican Cooking on a Budget. Is that right? Yes, I changed it for that. So, yes, now is that the new name. Yes. Okay, so I think that's great because you're cooking real Mexican food, but you're doing it fairly inexpensively. Yes, that's the I purpose. That's yeah. Great. yeah, I think that's great. Mm -hmm. So I am happy to have you on today. We are going to go through and look at your um, grocery haul and a little bit in your freezer. <laughs> 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 it's funny. Everybody is so nervous. I think it's so funny. Um, all right, let's get your grocery haul up here and we're going to look at what you got my vegetables i'm gonna do it kind of slow so you can see um i have a daughter that she's gluten-free and dairy-free so a lot of this that has to be like the almond milk the flour things like that the pasta um some things that they're not groceries but and I'm doing some freezer meal, not meals, uh, freezer breakfast and lunches for everybody else. So that's why I got a kind of that. But this is what I have today. This week, this is my groceries. Usually my budget is $200. This week it was $230. Um, but, but like the chicken I have for more, you know, for more meals for next week, tilapia. Like I have a few things that I know I, I can use. Um, Later on too, but I really want to, if I can cut my budget, it will be great. Like less money, my happy, my husband will be very happy. So, and the eggs too, the eggs eat like for two weeks. Hey guys, we need your help reaching 400,000 subscribers. Would you please hit that subscribe button? If you are loving these videos, give us a thumbs up and a like, and hit that notification bell if you want notices on how to save more money. All right, guys, so that was her grocery haul. Now, your two stores are HEB and Walmart, is that right? Yes. And you pretty much don't have anything else? 
I mean, I have more stores, but this week I only went to HEV and Walmart. Yes. Okay. What other stores do you have? I have Aldi, Kroger, um, oh. Aldi's, Kroger, HEV, Walmart. Yes. <gasps> I did not know that. Mm. That changes yeah. things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. So my advice is going to change a little bit. I did not know that. I was looking on the map and none of those popped up. So I should have just asked you directly. Oh dear. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's going to yeah. change just a little. My advice is going to change just a little bit, but not a lot. Okay. But so in all of those groceries, what I noticed was $34 of that was not food. Mm -hmm. So out of $230, $34 was not food. 30 to $40 worth of food you had for next week, your eggs, your extra meats, and those types of things that you were saying, um, your tilapia will go to next week. So I think if I estimated correctly, you only actually spent about $166 on food this week. So that's not mm -hmm. horrible. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can get down, of course, but considering, um, you know, what you got, I, you know, you didn't do really that awful. Now, so okay. let's say that 30 to $40 next week, we'll say $30 and go on the lower end. That leaves you with $130 then for just your groceries next week. Okay. So then that'll be even lower. So if you don't go and just go crazy buying. <laughs> now, here's where I started noticing, um, some of the things that you could cut. So let me get to that. Okay. So right here, uh, hold on. Oops. Okay. Oh, we went too far. Hold, oh, no, I'm Just having problems. Sorry. Okay. We'll just smile real big for just a minute. <laughs> oh, no, you got the wrong screen again. Oh, dear. Okay. This is not going very well. Okay. <laughs> okay. Just a second, guys. Let me get back to my screen here. Okay. There we go. Now, <laughs> sorry. Tara's at the wheel. Watch out. Okay. So, looking at this, um, so I noticed, did you go to mostly just Walmart this week or what did you get at HEB and out of this stuff? So ATV, I bought the meat, uh, the peanut butter, the, uh, the, 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 the crema that is on top of the peanut butter. Um, the apples were from there too. Okay. Uh, my milk was from there. The, the normal milk was from there. Um, the plates, the dishwasher soap. Um, okay. The pasta was from there. Um, Why are you buying dishwasher soap at HEB? Because I forgot a Walmart. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot okay. a Walmart, so I was like, oh, I have to go to there. So okay. I did it. Now, I'm going to tell you a tip real quick, and I need to get the footage yeah. filmed for this. But for dishwasher soap, um, after we talked to Pistol, did you see our appliance repair videos? where we were talking to the appliance repair guy, he said that we're using way too much dish soap. And so he said you need to use one teaspoon in a load of dishes. Yeah. So there's what? one thing that you can start saving. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So one teaspoon of dishwasher soap is all you need. And I have been doing it since he recommended that. It's been uh, almost six months now. And I noticed no difference at all, except that I'm not having to buy dishwasher soap. I've had one, we run the dishwasher every day and I have had one box of dishwasher soap and it's probably not even half gone yet. So then it's better to buy the powder one then? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can, do that. you can do the powder or the liquid, but I okay. just got the powder because it's cheaper and I haven't noticed any different. Oh, so, that's good. So you put that on the liquid too, right? Yeah. So either one, yeah, just use either a one, just use a smaller amount. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. I did it. So there, Great. that'll save you right there. Now, well, if she hasn't watched the whole appliance thing, you can do that with your laundry soap too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
just like a teaspoon to a tablespoon of yeah. laundry soap is all you need, he said. One for tablespoon for a big load. Mm -hmm. One teaspoon. No way. Spoon. Yep. <gasps> yeah. So what? I was going to, yeah, I was going to get that filmed, but I forgot. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Uh, somebody asked, what do you do if you have the laundry tablets? You can't do anything. I mean, you have to break them open, but that's why I don't buy the laundry tablets because they're yeah. so expensive. So next time you'll just use those and next time you'll maybe buy the other than yeah. buy powder or the liquid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I will do that. Yes. Yeah. She's feeding four people, guys. She has a 17 year old girl and an 11 year old boy and her and her husband is what she has at home. Yeah. So that's what she's feeding. What, Mike? Okay. Okay. So then, um, mom and I noticed that pretty much everything you have here <laughs> at Walmart, we wouldn't buy at Walmart. <laughs> so here's what, um, here's what we would do. And you're like, no, but I'm going to go through my list of 10 things that I wouldn't buy at Walmart. And a couple of these, yeah. I don't think you maybe had on your on your list here, but they're common things that um, other people, that most people buy. So I put those on the list, but we're going to go through that list here real quick. All right. So what are the 10 things I would not buy at Walmart? I would not buy my cheese. I wouldn't buy my ground beef. I wouldn't buy my chicken unless, unless, so here's the caveat on the chicken. I wouldn't buy the chicken unless it's the chicken quarters for 79 cents a pound or if the chicken is marked down with the yellow uh, yeah. the yellow Tack. tickets for less than two dollars a pound okay. okay because kroger and heb have chicken for two dollars a pound or less okay so i wouldn't buy my chicken i wouldn't buy my pork there unless it's marked down i would not buy potatoes potatoes you can get for um five pounds for let's uh, see it's five pounds for a dollar around thanksgiving yeah okay. so i stock up at thanksgiving i stock up for several months worth of potatoes because they'll last forever yeah they last a long time and then um regularly you can get um is it a let's see it's 30 cents a pound so that would be a dollar 50 for five pounds i think is what it was i think it was a dollar 50 for five pounds it goes on sale like every three months or so so i wouldn't get my potatoes either i would get um milk somewhere else other than walmart uh because it's usually 97 cents for a half gallon to to a dollar 97 for a gallon on sale I would not get grapes at Walmart and I would not buy peanut butter, which you didn't. So that was good. And I wouldn't buy sour cream. And soda. So, and, oh, and the soda. I forgot the soda. Yeah. So I, those are the things that I don't normally buy at Walmart because okay. I can just get them on sale at Kroger or Aldi mm -hmm. or HEB for less. So what I noticed is, are you... Are you shopping the ads when you go shopping and stockpiling when it's the cheapest? Or are you just buying as you need for the week? I just buy it when I need it. Okay. Yeah. I was going to ask, okay. did you buy yeah. anything on sale? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so that, that I pretty much guessed. <laughs> when I looked at your freezer, which we'll look at a little bit, I'm like, she's not stocking up when it's on sale. <laughs> it makes a huge difference yeah. when you start buying the okay. sales. You know, it really does make a big difference. And now that I know you have Aldi and Kroger also, I think you can get down to $100 just for groceries. Okay. A week. For sure. But I really think you could get down to $100 per person. Or I mean, $100 for $400. Yeah, $100 per week. No, $100 per person per month. So $400 a month is what I'm trying to say. I think you oh. can get your groceries, just your food down to $400 a month. Now that doesn't include all of your cleaning supplies and everything like that. Mm -hmm. I would say that's another 50 to a hundred dollars from kind of what you were showing. But I think you could easily combining the sales 
get down to $400 a month for your whole family for the grocery bill. Yeah, especially if you start going to Aldi's. I would check yeah. Aldi out because I was getting, before I moved and I was going there, I was getting potatoes really cheap. Mm -hmm. All the fruits and vegetables were much cheaper mm -hmm. at Aldi. Yeah. Um, the eggs were cheaper, usually. So looking at this, I can... We the can, apples. Yeah, we'll run through all of the things on that you have on here. Um, your bagels are cheaper. Your tortillas would be cheaper. Mm -hmm. Your apples, your butter, your ham, your strawberries, your um, canned goods. Pretty much every single thing on here oh, yeah. would be cheaper at Aldi. Yeah, even over Walmart. Pretty mm -hmm. much. The only thing Sorry. I don't buy it, didn't buy it Aldi when I had it was meat. Yeah, meat is cheaper meat. when you buy it on sale using the ads. I didn't buy meat or very much cheese. Mm -hmm. So so I think, what do you shop Aldi fairly frequently or not? I did it for, for a time, for a period of time. But what I noticed with Aldi is that my vegetables will go bad pretty easy pretty fast and sometimes i mean i do my meal planning but sometimes for whatever reason we have leftovers so i didn't cook the next meal and then those uh big vegetables will go bad and so i was like oh, i'm not liking that because then i'm so, okay. wasting so, money yeah. yeah so then what i would do is get your vegetables at heb or kroger yeah. and when they're on sale or frozen vegetables <laughs> And this is a good point. You need to know your own stores, yeah. you know, because yeah. different ones have different things. And so you, that's, a, that's really good that you yeah. stop buying the vegetables there, you know, because I had the opposite problem. Aldi did the good vegetables and my Kroger did the bad vegetables, you know? Wow. So it's just like, you've got to know your stores. Yeah. And, and you got to work with what, um, what, you know, your stores have, and work around so like i know here we don't have near the selection you do <laughs> i'm jealous <laughs> sorry but i am but um but i just know that we have one grocery store i won't buy meat there anymore the meat is always spoiled i bring it home and the next day it's spoiled i'm like no this is not okay and so i know another store is um we have two little grocery stores and then Walmart is all we have. And so then I know the other grocery stores where I get my cheese and my milk on sale and a lot of my vegetables on sale and fruit because they're the ones that always have it. So I just know that's where I'm going to be shopping for my vegetables and meat and milk. And then the store that had the bad meat, they have case lot sales, which is actually coming up pretty soon. And so like if you buy a case of canned tomatoes, they're 30 cents instead of 70 cents. Wow. So I buy the case of tomatoes then, and I only buy stuff we use, you know, like the macaroni and cheese last time was 39 cents a box. So I got a restock of macaroni and cheese, but I know that that's where I'm going to buy my canned goods. And so then I just fill in at Walmart with what I don't get, you know, like my pastas yeah. and uh, my rice and those types of things at Walmart is how I do it. I think your biggest so. savings will come from buying things on sale, though, mm -hmm. above all else. If you just yeah. do even half of your stuff on the sale stuff, you'll yeah. be surprised. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> looking at this, <laughs> are you do are you OK? <laughs> are you still with us here? <laughs> what are you thinking? Do I do I want to know? <laughs> I'm like, oh, Gabby. Oh, Gabby. <laughs> You're doing good. So do you work uh, outside the house or are you stay at home, mom? Uh, no, I do work uh, part time. I'm a teacher. OK, oh. so you only work part time. OK, that's good, because um, at least you're not quite so worn out. I mean, not that yeah. you're not worn yeah. out, but you know what I mean. It's even worse yep. when you're having to work yep. 40 yep. hours a week full yeah. time, too. <laughs> so that's good. Um, now, looking at this. I would not buy strawberries unless they're okay. on season. Um, I would not buy raspberries unless yeah. they're in season. 
I would cut the, um, okay, I would not buy any of your cheese unless it's on sale at Kroger and HEB. And it goes, it, I know it has to go on sale every three or four weeks at Kroger at least because I've been watching the ads and you guys have the same ads that I've been watching for other people. So I know the cheese just last week, I think it was on sale. So in two or three weeks, the cheese is going to be going on sale again. Um, your milk goes on sale at Kroger, possibly HEB. I don't know. I haven't watched their ads quite as much. The cuties or the oranges, is that oranges or cuties? Mandarins. Mm -hmm. Okay. Those will be going on sale for sure at Kroger. I would not get those until those go on sale at Kroger. And your apples will also. And one thing on the fruits, buying frozen fruits and like the strawberries, it's not in season. Those can be so expensive. So you really need to just buy your fruits seasonal, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Apples yeah. are going to be coming up like crazy. And try to just do your uh, recipes, have seasonal recipes, you know, have certain mm -hmm. fall recipes that call for apples or that type of thing. And then spring, you know, the strawberries are going to start coming in. So then you can use your your uh, strawberries, uh, your strawberries then. And you can also buy strawberries in the spring and freeze them, mm -hmm. you know, and so yeah. freeze some of your own. And it's not that hard to freeze those types yeah. of fruits, berries and things. So do that more so because mm -hmm. I've been wanting berries so bad, but they're so expensive, you know, to buy them frozen yeah. like that. All right, guys, this video is brought to you by our Dining on a Dime cookbooks. 25% off right now. All of these tips are in our cookbooks, guys. If you're going to start anywhere, start with our volume one, if that's where you're going to start, um, or if you don't know where to start, excuse me, volume two, it's totally separate recipes. And then also Gabby will want to get our gluten-free, dairy-free edition. She is going to get a $100 gift certificate to our store. So if she doesn't have that, she can get our gluten-free, dairy-free edition. I am gluten-free, dairy-free. And so I wrote it for just that reason because I got tired of eating gluten-free food that tasted like sand. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I'm not going to do this anymore. All right. We're going to go back here. All right. Now, let's go back to Gabby's ads. Mike, can you remove the lower third, please? And this is your ads from last week. So I saw you had seasoned chicken quarters for 99 cents a pound. That's actually pretty cheap. Wow. I would fill that semi-empty freezer of yours <laughs> <laughs> next time this happens with some of those. They're already pre-seasoned. I would just throw the entire thing. Just throw the whole packet yeah. in your freezer. Don't rewrap it. Nothing. Just throw it in there. Then when you're ready to defrost it, I just pull it out, set it on my counter, and then put it for a couple of hours, get it defrosted, put it in the oven, and let it start cooking. Or if you're at school, throw it in your crock pot or throw it in your oven at 250 degrees and just let it cook all day long slowly, and you will have the best tasting chicken. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, just pull the chicken out the night before, put it in the refrigerator, and then you can put it straight in the oven in the morning. You just turn the oven on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's oh, a wow. great way to save on that. You also had um, apples and pears. So instead of buying the strawberries and raspberries, I would have bought the apples and pears. And that would have been our fruit for the week. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't have bought the other stuff at all because that's just crazy expensive. Now, this week, I went today and... They have pork roasts for $1.49. Do you use a lot of pork for your cooking? Yeah, we do. I mean, not a lot, but we do eat porks, yes. Okay. So right now would be a great time to stock up yeah. on some pork because it's really $1.49 is pretty cheap. And even with the bone in, that's still fairly um, cheap. And then also they have right here cheese. $3 off, you know, when you buy $20 or more. Now, you would have to sit and do the math on this and actually yeah. make sure it's a good deal. It may or may not actually be a good deal. But a target price that we go for is $1.50 to $2 a pound for, no, wait, is that, no, $3 to $4 a pound for mm -hmm. cheese. 
So a dollar fifty to two dollars for the little eight ounce, eight ounce shredded. Mm -hmm. You know which ones I'm talking about? Yeah. This is the one here in the picture. Um, yeah. That would be a dollar fifty is a good price for that. A, now ninety seven wow. cents is an excellent price, and that's when I really stock up for my freezer. When I find it for ninety nine cents for eight ounces, or two dollars for sixteen ounces, which is a pound. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, now let's see what we got here. Next is, okay. And you can look these ads up yourself online. Yeah. Just type in your store and then it'll lead you to the website and do it that way, mm -hmm. you know. That's yeah. how, I don't know if a lot of people realize you don't need a flyer. You can just look it up online. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I just go online and just look to see what's on sale at the grocery store this week. Mm -hmm. um, Tuesdays. And Wednesdays is, no, Monday and Tuesdays is my ad. But I think in Texas, when we were there, it was Tuesday and Wednesday, I think. I can't remember. Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday in Kansas. I think Kroger was maybe Tuesday. I can't remember for sure. You'll have to look and see. But um, that's when we had them. Okay. Now, I have to tell you, I was a little shocked when I saw this. Good deal here or not so good deal. I was not sure. So this is in, I think, today's ad. I think it was today's ad when I went and look at HEB and I was like, whoa, is that actually a good deal or not? Because they have these buy something and get something else free. And you're thinking, hmm, are these a good deal or are these not a good deal? So I actually went through and did the math and <laughs> here's what I found. Okay. These were $12 each, the two taco meats. You had to buy two. And they were $24 for both of them. They're two pounds each. So that's pretty expensive for meat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's like really expensive for meat. And so then, oops, I got my graphics mixed up here. Let's see. So then, hold on. I got my graphics mixed up. Okay. This is the first graphic. $23.96 is what you have to buy for your buy your two. Okay. So I was like, whoa. That is super expensive. That's $5 a pound for ground beef. That's crazy high. But then when you go and look, you get your chopped onions for $2.98. Then you get your cheese for $2.78. You get your tortilla chips for $1.98 and your sour cream for $1.16. And your Texas size spoons, because we're in Texas, <laughs> your Texas size spoons for $1.50. So the point of this is it's an easy meal. And I was kind of like, hmm, I don't know if this is actually an easy meal. Because <laughs> I was sitting here looking and I was like, okay, by the time you have to dirty a pan to heat up the beef, you're still getting a pan dirty. That doesn't really yeah. make sense. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, okay, is that actually worth it? So then I went through, and is this the right graphic? Um, okay, so it is not the right graphic. It figures. Um, just a second. Let me back up here just a little bit. Um, okay, so then, um, sorry, guys. It's been a long day. So then I sat and figured, okay, if I were to make this myself, how much would this cost? So I could get four pounds of ground beef for $12. And then I could get tortilla trip chips for $1.98. I could get an onion for 50 cents. I could get the cheese for $1.50. We don't need the Texas size spoons. <laughs> and we could get the sour cream for a dollar for a total of $16.98. So I went and did the math and I was like, wow, is that going to actually be worth the time to do this? And what I came up with was, my file got closed, just a second, guys. What I came up with was, if you do the deal from HEB for four meals for $34.36, not buying it yourself, you just got their deal and did it. That would mean two meals, two normal American meals for $17. But if you actually did portion sizes, like what you're actually supposed to eat as far as portions, you would get four meals. And that would make it 
um, $8.59 instead of $17 per meal. So that's way better than eating out. But yeah. if you made those four meals yourself, so let's say you bought the ground beef and everything on sale and then you made them yourself, it would be $16 for four meals or for two meals and um, $8 for the, uh, if you broke it down or no, wait a minute, $16.98 for the four meals yourself. So it would be cheaper, but is it that much cheaper? No. You know, I would say for the extra, for the extra money, if you're working, then this isn't really that awful of a deal, $8 for dinner for a family now, you know? So if it means getting that versus going out to eat, then these deals actually aren't that horrid of a deal. And so the, the big thing is you have to look and do your math yeah. with all of these and make sure that when you're going through them, okay, is this actually going to be a good deal when I get all my numbers plugged in and figuring out what's, what's not an, and what's a good deal and what's not a good deal. So the bottom line is if it, if it looks good and you think, oh, this is a great deal. Sometimes you need to just not snap it up. You need to do the math and figure it out because sometimes it's really not maybe worth it. This Are you time knowing? it was. Yeah. This time it was, I but, would say it's worth it. But, but not always, you yeah. know, not always. So you have to just sit, don't just automatically assume because they're sh yeah. flashing this at you that it's a good deal and you should buy it. Yeah. So. Do you know your prices at your stores and what you're paying for stuff? And a few things, yes. And then other ones, no. Okay. All right, guys, type one, if you know your prices at your store, I'm curious if you guys know your prices and type two, if you just go to the store and buy whatever. I'm kind of curious to see where you guys are. Okay. Now you said you were going to make breakfast sandwiches. So I made up some for Jack this morning and I'm going to show you how, um, how I do it, but I have a question. Yeah. Why are you needing to make up breakfast sandwiches? Uh, just to make it quicker. Um, <laughs> I love it when you laugh. <laughs> uh, he goes to work very early, like very, very early, at four in the morning. Okay. And so uh, at that time, just he needs to run, like go. So I mm -hmm. just thought it would be easier. He just grabs something and go okay. instead of me waking up, doing it. Yeah. Yeah, you know. that's perfectly, so, yeah, that's that's perfectly, that's perfectly reasonable. Reasonable. fine. Yes, now, I would do the if same. If you would tell me, oh, well, the kids and I are just rushing out the door and we just don't have time in the morning to fix breakfast. Okay, that's, that's totally different, different than your husband getting up at four o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, it's especially for him because he goes very early. So I thought it's just for lunches and breakfast, just grab something and. Okay. Go. So what do you and the kids eat for breakfast then? Uh, they are, they do their own thing, whatever we get at home. They can do a scramble eggs or um, toast spread with jelly or whatever okay. they found. Okay. Yeah, I don't do breakfast. Okay. One thing good about that, too, is sending them uh, the breakfast with him. I see so many contractors at convenience stores, yeah. and they're spending yeah. 10 to $15 just for breakfast in the morning. Yeah. So look how much you're saving by just doing those breakfast sandwiches. And yeah. a lot of people don't bother to do something like that when you would save so yeah. much. Now, when I did this video, I thought you were doing it for you and the kids. I didn't know you were doing it for your husband. So I'm going to show you this video and then I'm going to tell you something different than what I said in the video. <laughs> okay. Yes. 60 pounds of bacon I got it last November. This is September, so it's been 10 months ago. Froze it. And this is how I cook it. When I defrost it, I just throw it in my Dutch oven. Ooh, it's not quite all defrosted yet. Now yeah, it's okay. And I just cook it all at once in the Dutch oven, and it goes so much easier. Okay. 
Okay, here is my bacon all done. Of course, I'm going to save the bacon grease right there is from the last batch. And I will just strain it and put it in the refrigerator. Okay, so here is my bacon, egg, and cheese so that I have. It's a much cheaper alternative. You get 20 servings for $1.32 versus, I don't know how much, three, four dollars now. Is that what bagels and English muffins are? Okay, I had the lid on there to melt the cheese. Cheese on, so. There you go. All right, that's your bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich. Now, I'm going to change what I was going to say a little bit. I thought you were making it for you and the kids for breakfast in the morning. Toast? I don't know why people don't use toast anymore. I know. Nobody uses toast. They have to buy bagels or biscuits or, or muffins. Um, muffins or something like that. But mm -hmm. just plain old toast. Mm -hmm. If you toast it, you can make a bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich in the morning. Now, if it's your husband, you want probably something sturdier. sturdier. So I would say that uh, the bagels down there in the bottom is actually a good idea. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you're putting them on your the, bagels. Or English muffins. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, she also had English muffins, mm -hmm. I think over here somewhere. And so I would say that that is okay. I would much rather have him having a bagel or English muffin frozen and ready to go than stopping at the convenience store. Yeah. So that price, just so you can get a price to help you feel better. <laughs> If you use the bagels or English muffins to make your BLT or your, I mean, your bacon, egg, and cheese, it will cost you about 50, depending on how much your bacon is, it'll cost you about 50 to 75 cents a sandwich versus $3.50 at McDonald's. Wow. That's a big savings. Oh, yeah. Right there. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. Somebody comment and tell me, have you bought a, a breakfast sandwich at McDonald's and tell me mom says she thinks they're more expensive now. Well, Last I saw they were 350. Well, but one I don't know. thing, one thing I noticed was I lived right next to a quick trip, a convenience store in Kansas. And I would go there and they weren't just buying a breakfast sandwich. See, that's what the mm -hmm. problem was. When you go into something like that, you're not just getting the mm -hmm. breakfast sandwich. Then you're going to get the chips or something to go with it. And then you're going to get a drink to go uh -huh. with it and maybe a donut or something. So if you were just driving through and getting the sandwich, mm -hmm. you know, that's still yeah. worse. But how many people do that? If you guys go through McDonald's, do you just buy the breakfast sandwich and nothing else? Now, some my age maybe do that. I and I do. <laughs> and I do that. But these construction workers do not. They're hungry for yeah. breakfast in the morning and they're really hungry. And they're looking at this whole array there at the convenience store or the menu at McDonald's. Mm -hmm. And they start buying, you yeah. know. Heather so, says yeah. that the the bacon, egg, and cheese at McDonald's are $4 at her place. So, yeah, that's a significant saving. So, I think you're doing great mm -hmm. by making the – yes, very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here's where I would save on that. <laughs> when bacon goes on sale at Kroger or HEB, yeah. I would buy your bacon and stock up and put it in your freezer. And okay. I would also – you've got in here – the higher end bagels instead uh -huh. of the dollar fifty bagels. Walmart has um, just the Walmart brand bagels for dollar fifty. Aldi probably does too. Yeah. And I would get those. These were I think three dollars when I looked them up, and um, that would be a much, a much bigger savings for you. And I don't know if he likes them or not, but maybe even the breakfast burritos. Yeah might be yeah. even less because the, you know, tortillas aren't near as expensive. Mm -hmm. So I know Tara's kids love the breakfast burritos. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so you could do something like that. That might be yeah. Yeah. yeah, my yeah. kids used to um, make the breakfast burritos. They, they went to school 45 minutes away from home. And so they would make the breakfast burritos and freeze them and just pop them in the microwave and eat them on the way to school. Um, so that That's would be good. another variety maybe for him. You know, yeah. and you could do sausages. Um, what could you do? You could do bacon, cheese, sausage. You could do green chili. You could do like oh. a red salsa one. Those would be really good too. You know, you could put anything in those. Onions, peppers, tomatoes, all kinds of stuff. She's She's got the Mexican cooking show, so she probably... <laughs> okay, so you tell me what you would put in there. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my. Okay. Now, next, the tilapia. 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 Um, it's fairly expensive, but I totally get wanting to have something different. So I I know that you are the Mexican food cooking expert. So I totally get it. <laughs> but I have to say. I made this recipe for fish tacos and I was raving about it about, I don't know, three or four months ago. And everybody was like, oh, we want that recipe. Well, we finally got it loaded on the website. And I'm just going to show you my recipe for fish tacos yeah. for, for people who wanted them since we're kind of in a Mexican food type theme here today. And um, this is what I do with it. Or not. Maybe. <laughs> so first I make a marinade. So I don't have I don't keep lime or lemon juice on hand anymore. I do the little packets. I love these things. I will lick I will lick them. I will link them in the description below. So I've got my lime juice here and then my olive oil and my cumin right there. Isn't that cute? Okay, and <laughs> chili powder right here, and paprika right there, and I don't have any ground red pepper, so I'm or cayenne pepper, so I'm going to use red pepper flakes. Put those in there. Stir that all around. I'm so excited. Yum, yum, yummy. And then I'm just going to put my fish in there and let it marinate for about 15, oops, 15 to 20 minutes. And then we'll finish the recipe. Okay, to make the sauce, I'm going to take some mayonnaise because I'm dairy free. Take my lime juice again. Now, since my mayonnaise is almost gone, I'm just going to mix it all in here. Right there. Then my sriracha, I add a little seasoned salt, extra garlic powder, and a pinch of cilantro. This is dry, you can use fresh. And then I just mix it all up, just like so. My mayonnaise. Your mayonnaise, what did I do to your mayonnaise? Now, normally I take and refill this one, but since we're out of mayo, I am going to, um, well, actually, hold on. Do I have more mayonnaise? Oh, I have more mayonnaise. Oh, Dave, I found mayonnaise. Aren't you excited? Yay. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and make up a batch real quick because I eat this every day on everything now. It's my new favorite sauce. It's like so delicious. So. I'm just gonna go ahead and make this up. Oh, that didn't go well. Right now. Let me just show you how I do this. Now, I can just leave it in here, but I like the squirt bottle. So, just add everything in there. And there we go. go and there we go okay and then oops just going to re mix this all up now it's all slippery okay and then I taste test it and see if I need more salt or something um who needs more hot sauce and more lime and more garlic. I just added more of everything. <laughs> okay. Okay. Mm. Oh, that is so delicious. Then what I do is I just take and scoop it into here because I like the squeezable thing, but you can just leave it in here. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to cook my fish. Okay, so here is my fish. And right here I have cabbage, goat cheese because I'm dairy free, and some green onions from my garden, and the sauce. 
I forgot avocado, but that's okay. And then I'm going to put this in there. Now, normally this would be served on tortillas, but I'm cutting back on greens. So I am just having it over the cabbage. Oh my goodness, this is so delicious. Sorry. Okay, that is how I make my fish tacos for everybody who is asking and asking. Um, now, this recipe is not in our Diana Dime cookbook, guys, but go grab our Diana Dime cookbooks. They're 25% off right now. The blue one is volume two and the red one is volume one. I do things backwards. <laughs> so this is the one to start with if you need a place to start, but they're separate recipes, easy recipes with ingredients you already have on hand. If you need our gluten-free, dairy-free edition, I have that also. And we get you in and out of the kitchen quick because I just don't like getting in the kitchen at all. All right, guys, the link is in the description below for our cookbook and for our fish, for my fish taco recipes. Did you? Have well, I was going to say? say I was going to give you guys a tip on the mayonnaise thing, uh, the squeeze bottle, the upside down squeeze bottle you were using. I was using mine this week. I buy it in the small one because I can't use the big one fast enough. So a lot of times, once if they go on sale, I get the smaller ones. And I was fighting trying to get all that mayonnaise out of there. I couldn't get it all out there, and I didn't have a knife. Nothing would get that out. I thought, what am I going to do? Because I didn't want to waste it. There's about two tablespoons left in there, at least two to three tablespoons. And it dawned on me, what I can do is add some milk to it and loosen it up and shake it up. And then I can use it on my potato salad or my pasta salad, salad dressing, salad dressing, something like that. So don't just automatically throw these containers away. You can, you know, that would be a whole meal's worth for me almost of a salad dressing. Yeah, so. definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I wouldn't throw it away no. once they're empty, you know, yeah. rinse them out. I do the same thing with ketchup. Mm -hmm. I'll rinse out the ketchup bottle ketchup. and put it in my sauces. So like if you make a lot of Mexican food, then I would just put it in with my enchilada sauce, you know, that type of thing. And that may not seem like a lot, but that stuff starts mm -hmm. adding up, you yeah. know, after a while. That's why we say use up every single bit of your food, not just leftovers, mm -hmm. but everything use it up. Yeah. So. All right. So I would say on your foods that you need to start doing a price book and checking your prices and watching your prices and buying things on sale. I would definitely start buying things on sale. Now, you sent me pictures of your freezer. So would you please explain what's in your freezer? <laughs> well, we have the turkey already. Okay. We're ready. Um, bread. <laughs> <laughs> bread that we I got on sale in Kroger's for quick meals um, I have some chicken and some bread I have a lot of bread I know <laughs> okay. so I would start using up some of your bread start rotating yeah. your bread I probably wouldn't buy more bread until you use up what's in your freezer first yeah okay, and then I have refried know? beans refried beans and I have more pork in that little drawer that is there. I have some pork and meat. I have a lot of meat there okay. too. Okay. And what's down on the bottom? A lot of more meat. Okay. And, and here I have, more. And I have meat. I have a lot of meat, like pork meat. I have the, the cheese that is in slices. Okay. Um, and some vegetables, like the butter squash. Um yeah okay now Super your freezers are your freezer is most not mo about half empty then i have and so what i would do in your freezer is make a shelf for your breads make yeah. a shelf i would probably do the door for your cheeses your juices those kinds of things in the door and then have a couple of shelves two or three shelves for your meats and then have a shelf for your vegetables. Does that make sense? Keep it all together yeah. that way, in one place. Yeah, that way you can see, oh, wait, my bread shelf is totally full. I don't need to buy any more bread. Mm -hmm. I'm good. And then what I would start doing is I would get that freezer full of on sale meats and cheeses. 
I wouldn't waste space with bread. Bread is super cheap. You want to use your freezer space for the more expensive items like your meats, your cheeses, your fruits, your um, juices. Like if you get juice um, concentrate, frozen Mi juice concentrate. Milk if it goes on sale. Milk if it goes on sale. Although now milk is going on sale quite a bit. Yeah. So you'll have to kind of watch that to see. Um, here it's going on sale about every three weeks. So I'm just rotating through it pretty quick, yeah, actually. It seems like one week they have half gallon, the next week they have mm -hmm. gallon, then they skip a week and then they do half gallon again. Is what they're doing here. So just watch your sales cycles and you'll be able to see when and what is going on sale. But I think if you start using your freezer more, you would actually start saving a lot more if you just only bought your meat and cheeses Jesus. on sale. You could probably save close to $150 a month. And mm -hmm. if you have it yeah. organized where you can see what you've got yeah. and need to use and that. And on the breads, guys, you can do a lot with that bread uh, besides just sandwiches or toast and stuff. I would take hamburger buns, hot dog buns. Mm -hmm. I put butter on them and stick them under the broiler. You could put garlic salt or cheese on them under the broiler and stuff like that. So you can use the, think of those buns and rolls for using them something yeah. other than just a sandwich or toast, you yeah. know. And we had a question, how long are turkeys good in the freezer? Um, so we had a viewer last Thanksgiving pull a turkey that she found in the back of her freezer that was five years old and cook it and it was good. So I would not recommend that. It's not going to hurt you. Yeah. The only thing is it'll just taste off. Yeah. It won't have a good flavor anymore. Yeah. It but just said it was fine. It doesn't get food poisoning or anything like that being in the freezer. It just uh, doesn't have the good taste mm -hmm. anymore. Quite Because it gets freezer burn taste. Yeah, so here's my tip on that. If you, fill your, if you fill your freezer with meats and then you find something and it's like two years old and you're like, oh, man, just cook it. And see if it tastes yeah. okay. I mean, it you might as well try. It's mm -hmm. not going to make you sick, mm -mm. but you might as well try. And then just have a backup plan of spaghetti or something if, if well, it doesn't taste and good. And too, but, if it doesn't taste that bad, it's just maybe not as strong a taste, you can add sauces to it. You know, use it in tacos, put taco seasoning or spaghetti sauce. Mm -hmm. You could put it in something like that that's well seasoned mm -hmm. or in a casserole. So. Yeah. If you're not just straight eating the meat itself, yeah. use it for something like mm -hmm. that. And yeah, and the seasonings will cover up if, if there is a little bit of freezer burn taste, mm -hmm. depending on how you cook it. Yeah. Especially with Mexican food, you yeah. probably would cover it just yeah. fine. <laughs> Nobody would know. So um, don't tell Mike, but I do that all the time. <laughs> he doesn't know that. <laughs> okay, now we're going to get to your pantry. This area where my stove is. And you just more things that I use a lot. More spices, my yeast, you know, like cornstarch, all this stuff. Like I just have a bunch of stuff. And my drawers are spices. I do have it. And okay, so I would say that's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I didn't see anything that was too crazy in there that, you know, you could really improve upon. I think you had it pretty good. Yeah. And here's one thing, though. You do a Mexican cooking show, so you have to have a lot more. of the spices yeah. and stuff. But people don't realize that the more um, to keep it simple, keep just a few spices that you use on a regular basis. It, this is just why you're trying to get out of debt. You know, I'm not saying this stuff is forever that you have to do this, but if you're really seriously trying to get out of debt, just keep a few simple spices and the sauces and all this other stuff. You may have to sacrifice, you know, some of this stuff for a while and keep the simpler the recipe, the less money you've got into it for spices and things. Now she does, Gabby does, uh, you know, the Mexican cooking show. So of course she has to have, all, you know, pretty much everything. But for all the rest of you, if you don't do something like that, just keep your, try to keep your spices and your sauces to a minimum. And you say, but I love to eat this and I love to eat that. Yes, I know you do, but you may have to sacrifice that while you're trying to get out of debt. Yeah, yeah, you may have to. Uh -huh. Mike, I'm having an echo, are you? Yeah, it's because uh, it's operating a little bit. Uh, I think it's because 
Gabby's phone is playing back. You're on the oh, phone. Gabby, can you, you can turn, it down a bit. turn your phone down just a tad? Or if she can put it on your phone. I can take it. Yeah. Just a second, guys. All right, guys, while we're waiting for her to do that, put in one. If you just have a couple of spices and put in type number two, type one, if you just have a few spices and type two, if you have a ridiculous amount of spices, <laughs> well, and which it seems like the majority of people do. So. Yeah. And okay. that can be, that can be overwhelming, you know, all the spices too, and take yeah. up storage space. So until you get everything organized and under mm -hmm. control, then, you know, sorry, mom, everybody likes their spices. I know you do. I really sorry. know. But you know, you've got a choice here. How serious are you going to get about getting out of debt? They like, they're not that serious. They like, their spices. <laughs> you know, I loved my coffee and stuff like that, but I made up my mind. It's not going to kill me to go without yeah. those things for a year or two, okay. you know? So you yeah. just, if you want to get serious about it, you have to kind of do that. Okay, now we're gonna look at her pantry. <laughs> look at, show them what you just did. <laughs> oh, we're gonna show your pantry here. <laughs> Please ignore my pantry, <laughs> the mess of my pantry. So, um, well, some of it are gonna be in Spanish, but um, I try to organize it this way so it can be a little faster for me. So there's pasta and rice and lentils. What we use of ice cream. Of course, kids, they don't put things on, on the where, where it goes. But uh, this is my baking goods on my chocolate chips and nuts and coconuts and all the stuff. Cake decorating, cakes, all these too. It's my oils in general. Um, peanut butter, honey syrup. This is for my salad, sweet cans, and here I have the salty cans, all my vinegars, my extras, I don't know what this is, and I need to clean up because I have a mess. So my breakfast area, my supposedly be breads, my jello, my napkins, which they're here, who knows. Anyways, so this is my pantry. It's a mess, please ignore it, but, and I know I need to kind of clean it better now. But this is my pantry. If you have a better way for me to organize it, I would love to, because it's kind of crazy. Anyway, so this is my pantry. Okay, so I actually do have a better way to organize it here. So, if you look at your pantry here, is your pantry driving you crazy or is it working for you? Oops, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Uh, Mike. There we go. Okay. Is your is your pantry <laughs> driving you crazy or is it working for you? Uh, I have to say that the majority, the most part, it is crazy. It drives me crazy okay. because it's hard okay, to find. Okay, because I can stuff. see yes. a couple of reasons why it would be crazy. So first of all, having all of these baskets in here like this. If you look at the design of the baskets, you're actually losing a lot of space in your pantry using these baskets. See how they're they're designed like an upside down pyramid? Yeah, they're at an angle. They're at an angle. So you're not actually efficiently using your space in there. I don't know, guys, type one if this looks like your pantry, type two if you don't have baskets, because I'm curious how many people use baskets and who don't. Now, what I would do is- Wait. What? Oh, sorry, um, just a second. So what I would do is get rid of these baskets in here and only use baskets for a few things. So like, like the little boxes that would fall down, then I would maybe use them for that. Your packets, like your jello packets or your rice, your little, if you buy the individual rice and like rice roni type thing, you know, in the little, what are they? They're just in the packages, packets, I yeah, guess. I don't know packets. how you would say that. I don't buy them, so I don't know what yeah. they're called. But the smaller things. Yeah, the smaller things that would fall over. But what I would do is, first of all, I would get clear containers, okay? So here's a couple of clear containers right here. These are some examples. I've linked these down below because people always ask what 
containers. But these are just examples. I got mine at thrift stores. But when you can see what's in there, you can say, wait a minute, I've only got three granola bars left. Or I've got two, I've got, what is there, eight salad dressings. I don't need to buy more salad dressings. So you can visually just quickly see an inventory of what you have. And you don't have to keep track of everything that way. But the little packets up there, you can see where I'm talking about. The ones that would fall over, those will fit in there. But I wouldn't put any of your canned goods mm -hmm. or anything like that. Now, what mom uses is over here. Um, mom uses just, oops. Oh, my goodness. Okay. What mom uses is um, these boxes. And you can get these for free. I was at Walmart yesterday. I just picked up a couple of these. And you can get them in all different sizes you know, longer or different, whatever will fit in your shelf. You can, they're just empty sitting on the shelves. I just pick them up and take them. And then what I do is like, I will stack all my soups in here. And if I have to pull it out, then I can just pull the one box of soups out. If I buy soups, then I can just pull this box out and put them in there if I need to. Or I usually stack them too deep. And that way they're easy to lift just one small box like this instead of a bigger container. And you can see everything because the sides are so low, you can see everything that's in it. Now this has markings on them. I've actually found them in different colors. I found yeah. pink ones and yellow ones and green ones and blue ones. But you could take a can of spray paint, just spray paint the edge that's sticking out, you know, if you want them to look really decorative. Now this, I found these there yesterday at Walmart. and they've got the dividers in there. So you could put the packets, put the brand new packets at the back and the ones partially used in these little dividers if you wanted to really divide it up even more. So when you start going to the grocery store or Walmart, look for these boxes. And what I like about this is the angle of the box. You can see everything that's in there then where the other boxes are, you know, a little bit wider. I think, I think, see, you've got different sizes. Of this. And we just take them off the shelf and ask the store clerk, can I have these? And they're like, oh, sure. They love for us yeah. to take them off there because they don't have to take them back and put them in the trash. I've never, and I, I go to Dollar Tree, every store I go into, if I see colored boxes or something, I just ask if I can have them and they, they love for me to have them. And so the amount of canned goods that you could fit in that one white basket that you have, you could, you could get three of these in that same spot. Easy. So one of these would equal probably half the amount of canned goods that you have. How many cans do you get in there? Six probably? Maybe like six or eight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is 12. So you would get half of one of these, but you could get three of these in that same space. You know, like you can see what I'm saying? Peaches yeah. and then the pears on top yeah. of that. And the other thing is to what's easy about this is when I buy a new can, I push just push the row forward and stick the the, the new can oh. at the back, and then everything's always fresh and new at the very front. So that now you can buy your canned goods on sale when they're on sale and stock up more. And, and you'll save more that way. And another place you can use this is in your freezer. Like if you buy strawberries next year and freeze them, uh, you can put the bags of strawberries in one of these, you know, in a box almost like this or something. And it keeps them corralled a little bit better. And you can put the newer ones at the back and the older ones at the front. So you're, you're sure to see what you have and to reuse them. So now what I would also do is when you get rid of your baskets here on um, your shelves, I would just stack all my canned goods there and all of my bottles of dressings. You will get so, you will have so much more space for storage. You will be shocked. Yeah. I and, wouldn't use the boxes necessarily for her shelves. They're not that, you know, deep this way. Yeah. I mean, it just depends. It's it just, just if depends somebody on, wants to use the boxes, yeah, but yours probably you wouldn't because you don't have to go that deep mm -hmm. and that far, but I would not put them in the baskets. You could, yeah. you'll probably double the amount of space, you yeah. know, or I something. think you can get probably if Even not, a, if not a third, at least double mm -hmm. the amount of food that you have in there right now. So then you can get a stockpile up from buying it on sale. And then you're not running to the grocery store every week. You're running to the grocery store once a month or once every two weeks, maybe. 
and or you're just going once a week to get your milk and your fresh vegetables. And so then you're saving a lot of time shopping and a lot of time getting organized and trying to find stuff. And so I think that would really help a lot to get rid of those baskets. I know people love them for their decoration, but they had they're not, they they're came, not they became popular uh, organizers came yeah. out and sometimes you can't always go with what the organizers say. Stop yeah. listening to these YouTube organizers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, I was listening to somebody the other day and she said, the organizer said, this famous organizer, you change your sheets every Tuesday. So she said, I'm trying so hard to change my sheets every Tuesday. Well, I couldn't have done that. I had a toddler that wet their bed, you know, like two or three times a week. And then I had a roof that leaked. And a couple of times a week, I'd wake up with water on top of me. So I couldn't change my sheets. But people are diehard trying to follow with these organizers. And it works for the organizer, but it doesn't work for other people. You know, if, they, if you have five kids under the age of five, what they say doesn't usually work for a real life type style. And those baskets came out. Everybody was doing those baskets. And I halfway wonder if sometimes marketing people don't tell the organizers, if you will help me sell these, you know, type of thing, maybe because it just spreads like wildfire. But I was going to say, too, when you start not using the baskets, you might leave like an inch or two. Like if you have your fruit here, then maybe leave an inch or two and put your meats or whatever, canned meats or whatever next. And then you're an inch two with your beans or whatever. That'll give you a little bit more visual uh, a rest for your eye. And you'll be able to glance quicker and see, OK, there's my fruits. And you can see them right away because there's a little bit of a separation. Mm -hmm. So I know this stuff seems little and not important. But like when you start doing a lot of these little things, you'd be surprised how it changed your yeah. life. Mm -hmm. I was taking ever since I lived in my house, I have two drawers in my vanity in the bathroom. And the one where my toothpaste is and toothbrush thing, I will it keeps hitting the door. I mean, I can only pull it out three inches and it hits my bathroom door. Mm -hmm. And I've been struggling with my toothpaste in there every morning. Well, I had my deodorant in that in my other drawer that I don't use near as often and my extra stuff over there. I just switched the door, drawers around. After two years, I finally switched those drawers around. And the other one that I use every day, I can pull it out. It's changed my life, you know, compared to the one I use just once or twice a week. So yeah. I hope you guys don't get tired of these little ideas because it just sometimes it really does help. I think once you get your pantry organized, I think it'll really change the way you're shopping because you're going to have more room. You're going to be able to see easier what you have and what you don't have. Mm -hmm. And I think it'll really help get your budget lowered because you're not buying things that you already have or, you know, not being able to stock up because you don't have as much space really is, is cutting in, cutting into your savings because the whole, I know we preach on this a thousand times, but the whole way to save money and you're, you've got a great selection of stores is to stock up when it's on sale. So I pretty much have gotten to the point now where I buy 95% of my food is on sale for the lowest stock up price. I don't buy food unless it's on sale for my lowest stock up price because I've gotten to the point where my pantry is always full and my freezer is always full and I'm just keeping a rotation going of the cheapest prices. And I think that's where you're getting stuck as you're buying it just as you need it for the week, instead of filling your pantry with the foods and deciding this is what I'm going to, you know, do with my food. So it, it will save you, I think, time and energy too, because now I'm to the point, I've got everything stocked up pretty good since we moved here. And I look at what's on sale. Well, there's only like last week I bought two things that were on sale. So mm -hmm. I ran yeah. in and I bought the two things instead of buying yeah. a whole shopping cart, you know, full mm -hmm. of all this stuff and buying a lot of extra stuff that I should probably be buying. You know, that I just mm -hmm. happen to see when I go in there. Now I'm going I don't even go in to the store if there's stuff on sale that I don't need so I can skip a week. So I'm saving time by not going every single week to buy stuff mm -hmm. and energy trying to go in and buy a whole shopping cart. It, you know, compared to just a couple of little, few little things that are on sale. Yeah. 
All right. So Gabby, how do you feel? <laughs> do you feel like we beat you up too bad? Were we too cruel to you? No, it was okay. It was okay. I mean, everything that you said, I'm not doing it. And I'm like, I have to do it if I really want to see a change. If I really want to save money, then I have to say, start doing it. So that's my goal for this week. And something that you mentioned in your last show when I was watching it that I don't do, and I was like, I need to start doing that, is you tell her, you told her that we need to do our um, menu planning with what we already have. And what I'm doing is I was like, oh, we want to eat this, 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 this. And then I'm like, okay, let me see if I have this. Okay, I don't have it. Then I have to buy it. And the only thing that I'm doing is just putting more stuff on those baskets that I'm not using. So I thought I have to do that change too. Yeah. So and I would not go grocery shopping for at least a month and use up the food you have. You can do it. Yeah, you, you can do it. it. You would be surprised how what you can come you can up. Do you it. can come up with some good and different things by doing so. As a matter of fact, I want to see you do it. <laughs> I want to follow up and see you do Actually, it. Actually, not I only Gabby, but yeah. everybody that's listening, <laughs> try to go two weeks or three weeks yeah. without going yeah. to the I grocery think, store. You'd be surprised. And yeah, you know you what? Could go a month. What Easy. happens is once you get it organized, you don't realize emotionally and mentally how that heavy that is, you know, stressful it is trying to come up with just the shopping list and going in and look at the grocery store and trying, it's, it's exhausting to me to go to the grocery yeah. store and you would be so relieved once you get this pattern down that cooking and making, you know, meals and stuff will not be quite so overwhelming, yeah. you know? So what I would do is not go grocery shopping except for maybe milk and fresh vegetables. I'll let you have milk and fresh vegetables. But <laughs> you've got enough bread and cheese yeah. and meats. Yeah. I would not buy any of those for at least a month, okay? Then you're going to okay. take that $1,000 that you're saving, okay? And when Thanksgiving comes, then you're going to stock up your pantry is going to be cleared out. You're going to, the time that you would have spent grocery shopping, you're going to use organizing your pantry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the money you would have used grocery shopping, you're going to use it to stock up your pantry and your freezer after that food has been used up around Thanksgiving is really stinking good deals. I mean, Thanksgiving is coming up. So let's get these freezers cleared out, cleaned up organized use some of that bread in the freezer you don't need to be buying any more bread <laughs> and then i think you know if you just buy eggs and fresh vegetables and milk for this month i think you'll have a good 600 to 800 dollars probably then you can start stocking up and then your grocery bill is going to start snowballing down mm -hmm. it's going to start getting smaller and smaller and smaller because you're buying only on sale. And I think you're going to really notice a big change in your grocery and, and you'll be able to see what you've got. So you're not wasting any food. You're using yeah. all your food up instead of, you know. And don't throw away things like bacon grease. Do you save your bacon grease? Save your bacon grease. Yeah. I use yeah. bacon grease for use scrambled. For oh, it's yeah. for scrambled eggs. It is so And it's really yummy. good Mexican food. I mean, I know that's yeah. maybe not proper, <laughs> but I use it. Yeah, I yeah. use it all the time in queso. It's really good. Yeah, it it changes things. <laughs> Adds good flavor. I can't hardly eat eggs now without bacon grease. Yeah. Well, I never have been able to. I use uh, bacon grease to make fried potatoes. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. You know, just, oh, yeah. I just use it in everything. Yeah. Guys, so. type one if you save your bacon grease. And type two if you don't. I'm curious how many people don't. So just save your <laughs> bacon grease and pour it in a little jar. And I keep mine on the stove because I use, I literally use it every single meal. And, and that way I'm not buying butter for things yeah. like cooking my eggs, frying my potatoes, frying my meat. I only use bacon grease for that. And then I'm not wasting money on butter. And that's another savings right there. And you can keep it in Texas. I would probably keep it in the fridge, but you know, yeah. I just pull it out. Um, you know, you guys are, you guys are hot down there. <laughs> so I would keep I tell it you what, fridge, just try it with your yeah. eggs with eggs first and see what you think mm -hmm. of the flavor of yeah. the eggs with the bacon grease. Yeah, I'm gonna be doing a, a friend of mine's pantry organizing 
in about two weeks, I think. I'm going to try and get it filmed next week. So I think it's going to come out in about two weeks. And so that might give you some ideas, although you can already get started. Don't let that be an excuse to not get started. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no. I'm but sorry. I, yeah, you I think you're actually doing really, really well. I'm, I'm very impressed. Yeah, yeah, you're doing great. You really you just are. need to start buying things on sale. Mm -hmm. So do you have any yeah. questions for us? No, thank you. I'm excited. I, I mean, I have to look for all the ads for the stores because I don't do that. So I have to start doing that so I can compare prices. I'm going to start my, my notes, my notebook with all the good deals mm -hmm. so I can know when it's a good deal so I can stuck up in that time. Yep. I really like that tape. I was like, I'm going to do that because definitely. Hey, I'm going to send you a hundred dollar gift a uh, gift card for our store, but I'm also going to send you our price book that you print out for free. So you can keep, so you can keep okay. track of your prices. So I'm going to send you those two things. So be looking for those in your email guys. We're going to answer your questions next. Thank you, Gabby. We appreciate you taking Thank the time. You, Gabby. You're doing a great job. <laughs> you really you are. You're <laughs> just so so super good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll bye see bye. You later. <laughs> All right, guys. Didn't she do a good job? Yeah. You know, we've noticed we did not anticipate this problem with the grocery audits, but everybody's embarrassed or ashamed. But let me tell you, this is everybody's kitchen. Yeah. This is your I know. I'm spitting. You're not <laughs> crazy. You're not anything abnormal. No, so, it's perfectly. Yeah. They've all been normal so far. So, you know. So if you guys want a grocery yeah. audit, please link in the description below and you can sign up and we will, um, Take a look. There's only a couple of people that we haven't done so far. So um, we will let you know as soon as um, as soon as we need people. So go ahead and sign up now. We're trying to get ahead on shows um, and get going on that. So we're, while Mike's sending me the questions, look at the deal mom found at a garage sale. It's a Yeti. Look at that. And it was $1. And it's like brand new. Mm -hmm. I don't even think it's been used. I was impressed. Mm -hmm. Aren't you guys impressed? <laughs> All right, guys, give me a thumbs up. Type one if you are liking these grocery audits, please, so we can know if you are enjoying them. And we're going to get to some questions. Here. You know, and on the pantries. We've all had little kids. We all have kids that go in and dig through the pantries and husbands that dig through the refrigerators, you know, and they get messed up and jumbled. And ours is not picture perfect all the time, like, in, you know, anybody else's. The main thing you have to do is just keep it organized enough so your family can know how to use it, you know, and it may get out. Things may get out of place sometimes, but just keep I try to stay top on top of my pantry by when every time I unload groceries and put something in there, I see if anything's out of place and I straighten it. And once you get it organized, you'll see when something's out of place really fast and you'll just automatically without thinking, start organizing it and it'll, you'll be able to keep it on top of it real easy. So, yep. All right. Let's see. Mackenzie got her print books this week. She also bought the digital edition. Wow. Oh, thank you. my. This is volume one, Dining on a Dime cookbook, volume two. All of these tips are in our cookbooks. Plus, well, I don't know how many we gave today, but we had 1,200 recipe and tips in our volume one and 800 recipes and tips in our volume two and 800 recipes and tips in our gluten-free, dairy-free edition. And they're all easy recipes that get you in and out of the kitchen quick mm -hmm. with ingredients no shiitake mushrooms no weirdo stuff guys we're not doing that basic cooking basic ingredients that you already have on hand so thank you mckenzie for ordering they're 25 percent off right now in the description below celeste says she watches her youtube channel and gabby does some good cooking <laughs> yeah yeah guys go check out her channel i put a link in there it is let me make sure I have it right. It is Mexican cooking on a budget is Gabby's channel. The link is in the description below there. So go check her out, guys. We really appreciate her taking the time. Mm -hmm. um, Katie says she made the pancake recipe in Dining on a Dime and absolutely loves it. They are easy to make and she froze the extras for later. That's mm -hmm. great. Um. Okay. 
let's see. Trudy says milk here is way more than a dollar ninety seven a gallon. Yeah, I mean you just got to use with what you have. But I am noticing. A lot of people keep saying things like that, and then I go look at their ads, and, and they're on. They're just not shopping the ads. Yeah, you got to really you check shop all the, the stores in your area, mm -hmm. and even Canadians. We're doing a Canadian audit in like two weeks. <laughs> even you Canadians, your prices are not that bad. I am going to have something to say about Canadian prices in the video <laughs> coming up here. Actually, we've had a lot of Canadian viewers say the same yeah. thing. They agree with yeah, you. They agree that. with mm -hmm. us all the time on that. Vicky says Kroger this week had grapes for 99 cents a pound. Oh, she missed out on that. But yeah, I would only buy my fruits and vegetables that are on sale. Now, Green peppers don't really go on sale here in Wyoming. Onions don't go on sale here in Wyoming. Bananas haven't too often. Bananas don't go on sale here. So the only fruits and vegetables that I can get here are like apples, oranges, potatoes, grapes, strawberries, watermelon, peaches. Otherwise, I don't have much of selection. But she's in she's in almost Houston, so she doesn't <laughs> have an excuse. She's she's got good good grocery stores. <laughs> Uh, Tammy says she makes her own cleaning supplies. Yes. Mm. Volume one. We have all the recipes here if you need them or want them. And also, some toiletries. Yeah. Livingonadying.com is where you can get those recipes. Lisa says, I feel like that varies from Aldi's. Her old Ollie was like that, meaning the bad uh, veggies. Veggie. But the one now in Wisconsin is great as far as meats and veggies. Yeah. You just yeah. have to know your store. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As Letitia wants to know how often she shops. I think Gabby shopped once a week is what she was saying. Wow. Louise scored big this week. She got 12 plums for a dollar. Oh, that's good. That is a stinking good Yeah. Idea. There's certain that fruits and vegetables that we don't get too often here. Yep. Guys, if you have comments, post them and Mike will grab them and send them to me. Uh, Jan says we never have case sales. I, I, this is the first place that I've ever lived yeah. where they had case sales. I, this is the first time. So it, when I did it before, I just waited for them. Like my cream soup mixes, my corn, my green beans always went on sale at Thanksgiving and Easter. So I stocked up then. So just if you don't have a case sale, nah. stop making excuses. <laughs> stop well, making excuses. You know, like at Christmas, a lot of the cream soups and stuff go on sale quite often. You yeah. Know, so. yeah. So that's what, listen, guys. And we have a cream soup mix. Yeah, recipe. In, yeah, in we have Diamond, the mix. We have the yeah. mix that you can make it in there mm -hmm. too. And a lot of people yeah. say it's cheaper and they like it really well. Yeah. So yeah, and I'll tell you guys, go ahead and put your questions in. But this is a no excuse night. Yeah, and you know, I want because if if you say, well, I can't do this or I can't get it this cheap then start thinking of a way that you can substitute something or make it different or do something different, a way that you can fix a problem, you know, yeah. instead of just saying, well, yeah. I can't do it. So I'm not going to yeah. try. Not that we're saying you did that necessarily, no. but yeah, you no, know. I think Gabby's willing to, yeah. I, I was under the impression no, she was I mean, willing whoever to do asked it, this so, yeah. question, not that we're saying yeah. you're doing it necessarily. Well, but, let know. me tell you, Tara went to the PTA parent oh, meeting no. last <laughs> night at school <laughs> Oh dear. She's in a no excuses mode today. <laughs> Let me just say, I was not an alcoholic before I went. <laughs> and I am an alcoholic after I went. <laughs> well, those, just put it those that PTAs way. PTAs will do it to you every time. Let me just say. <laughs> Let me just, let I me just show you all last night. It was very interesting. <laughs> let me just show you. This is Tara yeah. hitting the vanilla when she got I home. had to hit the vanilla <laughs> at, oops, after the PTA yeah. meeting. <laughs> I had to hit the vanilla after the PTA meeting yesterday. <laughs> so there are going to be no excuses tonight. <laughs> so you guys better tread lightly tonight. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Tammy, Tara, do you have a master list of the lowest cost of foods we should aim for? Yes, it is my price book. If you go, Michael put the link in there for you. Like not buying ground beef until it's a certain amount per pound. Yes. So like I do not, it used to be $2. Now with inflation, I don't buy ground beef unless it's $3 or less a pound. I don't buy chicken unless it's $1.99 a pound for boneless, skinless uh, breasts or 75 cents a pound for bone in like thighs, drumsticks, quarters, chicken quarters. Um, 
Milk right now, it's $1.97 a gallon is my price. Eggs is 97 cents a dozen, but six months ago or three months or four months ago, whenever eggs were crazy, I bought a dozen eggs like every six weeks. I stopped using eggs. So if a price just goes crazy like eggs did a few months ago, I stopped using them. I used egg substitutes. And so um, that's why I say, you know, if something's really expensive right now, then substitute mm -hmm. something or yeah. use it differently. Like yeah. uh, let's say chicken skyrockets. Well, what you can do is instead of just frying a piece of chicken up, you can use that chicken in a casserole, mm -hmm. you know, or in chicken soup because that'll stretch it farther. That doesn't mean you can't do anything at all. You just need to change how you're doing it. Yeah. Banning the Bad Lad says don't store onions near your potatoes. Yes. Mm, I true. put my onions in the refrigerator and I have not cried cutting onions in the 30 years that I have done that. And so, be careful care bringing in things like potatoes, bags of potatoes and bags of fresh vegetables. In Kansas, you could get roaches sometimes. So you might just check the bags over if you live in an area like that to make sure, you know, that you don't have something. Tammy says, how do you save on groceries when you have to buy online? So I don't know where you're buying from, but it would just be buying store brands. It would be buying... Um, the, just buying the cheaper brands. Look per ounce instead of per box. Don't go by the box amount. Go by the ounce. You know, now companies are putting less food in for the same price. So it's not as good of a deal as it used to be. So like it used to be 97 cents for 16 ounces. Well, now it's 97 cents for 12 ounces. So you just have to compare and see which is cheaper. And buy cheaper things. Sometimes people buy yeah, like shrimp. Well, I love shrimp too, but it can be very expensive. So I just mm -hmm. eat a can of tuna, you know, and that may seem drastic. And you say, well, I can't do without my shrimp or I can't do without this. We're talking just a time period to help you get out of debt and get your money under control. Well, like Gabby today. She was buying fresh bagels and fresh English muffins, but looked like she had bagels already, I think, possibly in her freezer. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't have bought more. Or just use toast. Nobody yeah. just uses plain I know. bread you and can toast just use anymore. Bread. Yeah. So Lori wants to know, do we have a recipe in our Dining on a Dime cookbook? Yes. Volume one for homemade mayonnaise. On um, using the bread, you don't have to have hamburger buns. Mm -mm for hamburgers just put it between two slices of bread or I, my mom used to slice the slice the uh, hot dogs lengthwise and she'd lay them in between two pieces of bread or you can roll up the hot dog in a yeah. piece of bread lisa says she loves our gluten-free dairy-free cookbook thank you both of them are celiac but with the added, added bonus of full wheat allergies after you cook for gluten-free for a while, it's easy. Yes. As a matter of fact, it took me a really long time because I was gluten-free, dairy-free with this cookbook for, well, wow, have I been gluten-free that long? Oh my goodness. Yeah. So I was, I only used this cookbook for like 13 years, um, gluten-free. I, my assistant at the time, Heidi, she said, you got to write gluten-free tar. You got to write gluten-free. I'm like, why? It's not that hard. But I wrote this because I know when you're first getting started, it's really hard. But once you get going, you just substitute rice and potatoes instead of biscuits and gravy. So like I would have mashed potatoes and I would just use um, cornstarch instead of flour. So it's actually quite simple once you get going. Don't be overwhelmed. It's not really that hard. Bonnie's Journey says she orders online from Walmart and Kroger. There is no extra cost or fees. Yep. Mm -hmm. There you go. No, you don't get the clearance or markdown. But, you know, if you can't physically go to the store, it's still cheaper yeah. than eating out. Yeah. So uh, when you were talking about <clears throat> substitutions, you know, I've noticed a lot of people are using the almond milk, the oat milk and those types of things. And those can be a little bit more expensive, I think. And you maybe don't want to totally do without them. But you might think of changing your diet in such a way that you don't use yeah, I don't even use those things Milk hardly that much. at all. Yeah. yeah, so that not to totally give it up completely, but start changing what you eat mm -hmm. to adjust, you know, like, not using that stuff. I just eat my cereal dry. Yeah. I don't even use, I, as a matter of fact, the only thing I use rice milk for is baking now. I don't use it in my tea or coffee or anything. So, but things like uh, oatmeal or even creamy wheat or something, you don't have to put milk in there. I've never put milk in mine. I just eat it no. without milk. Yeah. And so you can just adjust your diet like that a little bit. Yeah. 
Uh, Vicky says, I've been buying flat chicken breast for $5 at Kroger. It's about six fillets. Oh, okay. I think that's like really expensive. $5. That's probably about a pound. And if so, yeah, just flatten them yourself. Save your cereal bags and put one in there, whack it with the hammer and throw away your cereal bag. <laughs> You know, so yeah. Kimberly says putting out lots of fires today. So she's late. That's okay, Kimberly. <laughs> it's been a day of surgery and had to call a plumber. Oh, oh no. no, that's not good. Oh, you dear. have been putting out fires. Trudy, mm. she's on disability family three and do monthly shopping. Never got less than 450 for groceries. Um, You probably can. I mean, I, I, I don't know where you live, but most people can get below that. Just start shopping the sales and you'll be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, Trisha, what do you use saved bacon grease for? So we have a whole video on, um, how to use bacon grease, but, um, we use it to fry potatoes, scrambled eggs, um, to grease, um, the pan, if you're going to fry pans. meat, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, the bread, what I like to use, and you can't taste it. Don't think it's going to taste like mm -hmm. bacon is when I make homemade bread mm -hmm. and I put it in the bowl to rise after I get the dough mixed together I put in the bowl to rise I grease the inside of that with uh the bacon grease mm -hmm. and it is the best with dinner rolls if you make homemade dinner rolls cinnamon rolls just uh, grease the inside of that bowl lightly with the bacon grease and it keeps it from sticking mm -hmm. but it adds a flavor that's just unbelievable yeah um I just put the link in there for you guys put it in Green beans. I always cook my green beans with a little spoonful of bacon grease. Yeah. Um, okay. And pork and beans. When I make our baked beans, when I make baked beans, mm -hmm. that's where I use my bacon grease. Let's see. What else do you use it for? I use it in refried beans. I use it in queso. I use it in frying. I fry everything in bacon grease. I yeah. If very you're frying, rarely if you're use frying pork. pork chops yeah. and you need grease mm -hmm. for that, you put use bacon grease instead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've even used it guys for popcorn. Yeah. It's really oh, good. Yep. Yum. It it's popcorn. good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. Let's see. We got, yeah, you won't get bacon grease with turkey bacon. Sorry about that. Leticia. No. <laughs> um, yeah. Fry veggies in it. Mm -hmm. That kind of thing. All kinds of veggies mm -hmm. are really good. I just it. stored in a Mason jar in the fridge in the summer, on the stove in the winter. I mean, I, I'm not exaggerating. I use it probably every single time I cook. So I just leave it on the stove top and just use it up real quick. Um, let's see. You know, if you guys have some other ideas on when you use bacon grease, pop in there in the comments, if you yeah, want to let, let us know some more. Heather says she loves the true lemon and lime powders. Yes. I find they are the most economical because what I found was my lemons and limes were going bad because I wasn't using them fast enough. So I just got the little packets. And so for me, since I use them that way, it's a lot better for seasonings. Um, Donna freezes cheese for the future use. Yes, she does. Mm -hmm. And Naomi wants to know, is bacon grease the same as using ground beef hamburger patty grease? Um, it's not the same food, but you use it the same way if you want wanted to do that yeah. yeah you a lot of people do but i i don't usually use the hamburger mm -hmm. grease as much well usually what i do is i make gravy hamburger gravy yeah. out of my hamburger grease and mm -hmm. so it's really good everybody's loving your blouse today my what your blouse oh thank she you paid a dollar no that was the freebie wasn't it that was the free one. Oh, uh, i don't know yeah it was that one... was the free one at the at the, the thrift store thrift store where i passed out <laughs> and i didn't try it on i didn't know yeah. if it was gonna fit our dollar <laughs> No, was that the dollar one? I think it might have been a dollar or something. Dollar. I can't remember. It's been a dollar. while. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Vanessa wants to know, is bacon, bacon grease bad for cholesterol? No, you're not pouring no. six inches of bacon grease in your pan. You're pouring a tablespoon for four servings, which is a half, three quarters of a teaspoon for each person. It's, so re don't, it's yeah. really ironic now. I've heard two doctors just recently say that... Uh, You've got to use fat. As a matter of fact, I heard a preacher too. He said, and he was pretty healthy. He said, you know, here I've been doing, staying away from fat, staying away from fat because it's supposed to do all this stuff to me. And now they're saying that your body needs fat, which they've always said that, but they just started, you know, I don't know why they started that years ago. And so no, the yeah. bacon grease. The thing is you're not using cupfuls of this stuff. Yeah. And 
Brownie in the Badlands says, Jill, less spices and no coffee. Someone could get hurt if I gave up. <laughs> I know. It was hard. Cindy <laughs> says, how do you organize chest freezers? So I think the easiest way to organize them is with baskets in yeah. your chest freezer. Then you lift the whole basket of cheese out and you lift the whole basket of hamburger rolls out. So everything so doesn't get jumbled down in. Yeah. 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 Mint says Dollar Tree has lots of spices. You might need to use a pinch more. Yeah, there. I've noticed Dollar Tree spices are just fine. Christine says she uses uh, garlic powder and garlic onion and salt and pepper. Yes, that's, that's pretty much that's all. That's pretty much what I use. Yeah. yeah. Claudia, uh, I live in a whole house. Worry about mice, so I keep things in big popcorn tins. Very good. Mm -hmm. Yep. And Christine says she loves the clear containers for her fridge. Yep. Yeah. Claudia, I take and I have a shoebox clear container and I line my cheeses up in there because I can mm -hmm. see the top of them, you know, and they're just the right width and everything. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, all right. Let's see. Claudia says she put 20 packages of 47 cent noodles from Amazon's in an old popcorn tent she got for 25 cents. Very mm -hmm. good. Yep. There you go. Letitia says she buys bulks, spices in bulk. Okay. Do you guys type one if you buy spices in bulk. I don't buy them in bulk as far as the great big containers. I have a couple of great big containers. And the only reason why I have those is because I was doing cooking videos and I had to have that spice, paprika specifically, for that spice. And I couldn't find it anywhere. But other than that, I don't buy them like that very hardly ever. Well, one thing, spices can, um, they don't get old or bad, but they lose their potency mm -hmm. so unless you use it a whole lot you know mm -hmm. it's really yeah it might not be worth it um oh barbara she <laughs> counted 45 bottles of spices <laughs> that's bad but you know wow. everybody, them up. everybody's doing that they keep finding a recipe that calls for this spice mm -hmm. and they only use the spice in this one recipe that's fine if you've got plenty of money to spend on spices. But if you're trying to get out of debt, don't use the recipes that take a, a gazillion of these things. For a year or two, you can stick to the basics that use garlic salt, garlic powder, and that type of thing. Maybe, you know, um, I don't know. I only have about 10 spices that I use, yep. period. Becca says, we are the best show on TV, the movies, or the internet. Oh, oh. could you guys like share and give us a thumbs up and <laughs> yeah. let everybody know let that, everybody. please? So the algorithm will know. <laughs> if you guys give us the thumbs up and you share it, that really helps I was going to ask yeah. you, do you do the thumbs up underneath the, where the mm -hmm. picture is yeah. or on the comments? Under where the picture is. Yeah, you both, have to. But underneath oh, the you comments, do both? yeah. Okay, I didn't know. Yeah, underneath the comments helps YouTube know that you guys really like us. See, if I go listen to a pastor or a, a Christian speaker or something, you know, on YouTube, I just automatically click that thumbs up for them just to, you know, help them. Yeah, it gets it. You mm -hmm. it spreads the word better, yeah. you know. Uh, let's see. Country Frau, Mike, send me the next batch. Country Frau says, now that we are retired, my husband has all kinds of things he wants to have in terms of food. He used to just like five things in life, and now he has a whole grocery shopping list. Sigh. Oh, oh man. yeah, that's rough. That's <sighs> when you're wanting to stop cooking. He's wanting Tell to start. Him, back off, buddy. <laughs> no, have him go take a have cooking class. Have him do class. it all. Have him to go take a cooking class. <laughs> yeah, have him do it all. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah, that would keep him busy and fine. Satisfied. If he wants to do that, he can do all the cooking then. <laughs> um. Okay. Let's see. Um, what about if someone needs organics because of health issues, then you just buy it on sale. <laughs> Organic goes on sale all the time too. Mm. So it's the same principles. Um, Seeking Joy says, I wish you would discuss cans with pop lips. Someone on YouTube said they are weaker than regular cans. Yes, I have heard that. So the pop for, so the pop lids are popping quicker than the regular, just old fashioned, you know, you have to open it yourself. So I would not store those as long term and I would use those first if you have those. Yeah. And one thing, if you keep rotating this stuff yeah, out, doesn't really matter. you know, I have nothing in there. I've got like two years supply at least on some of my canned goods, but I keep rotating them out and using them. You shouldn't be buying stuff you're not using. 
Yeah. And ro you should be rotating that, and then that won't be a problem. Vanessa says she's in Australia, and she's not used to hearing people cook with leftover animal fats. Oh, that's hilarious. Oh, that is funny. So we have someone who applied from Australia, and I'm going to try for one of our grocery audits, and I'm going to see if she will talk about that. That's interesting, huh? I'll have to, I'll ho hopefully I can remember that. If I don't remember it, I, that show should probably be in two or three weeks. It depends on how long it takes her to get me the stuff. But um, now I just use yeah. the bacon grease. I don't use other types of grease like yeah. the hamburger grease yeah. or but pork you can. grease. I suppose you could. You My grandma used yeah. to. I just don't. Yeah. And I make gravies out of a lot of those too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Yeah, you could use grilled cheese sandwich, bacon grease on grilled cheese sandwiches, water bucket. Yep, you could do that. That's another good thing to use up bread that mm -hmm. you need to use up quickly is yeah. to do any type of grilled cheese sandwich, grilled for, ham. Good for pancakes and bacon grease is good for Oh, it's uh, really good pancakes for pancakes, pancakes French, French toast. toast. Yeah. Oh, really good. Mm -hmm. You guys will be surprised. Once you start using bacon grease, you're going to be using yeah. it all the time. It totally changes the yeah. flavor to enhance whatever you're yeah. cooking. Um. Okay. Um, oh, wow. Heather the Mountain says no grilled cheese is made like the ones with bacon grease. Yeah. Oh, now that's, that's what really I haven't good. tried. But I bet be that good. would be, that'd be good. really good. Before I put my groceries away, Claudia says I write the expiration dates. Very good. Mm -hmm. Yep. Kimberly says those baskets won't be wasted because each kid can have their own laundry basket to take to the room and put away clothes. Yeah, yeah we didn't tell Gabby that. You know, mm -hmm. don't get rid of those baskets because they're other handy for other things. They're mm -hmm. really good for other things. Especially for organizing like your medicines mm -hmm. and your um, band-aids and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, Heather, is our gluten-free, dairy-free cookbook in digital form? Yes, it is. And it is 25% off right now in our store. Easy to use recipes. Your gluten-free baking is not going to taste like sand, I promise. And our volume one and volume two of our regular cookbooks are 25% off right now. Um, start with volume one if you don't know where to start. Christine says she made homemade biscuits with baking grease. That's good. Oh, idea. yeah. Belinda says, I think everyone makes the same mistakes. They want different things to eat. Our mothers had a set menu for every day of the week, and that was so much easier. Yeah. I know. The problem with Americans is we just eat too darn too much food so much so it's much ridiculous. different type things like too and everything grandma would have a roast on sunday mm -hmm. and then she would yes. have chicken pot pie on monday and, and she we would have, have spaghetti one yeah. night I you mean, know and they didn't fried potatoes with pork chops another night mm -hmm. liver and yeah. onions and cream potatoes another night <laughs> Actually, that was pretty good I it like was that. really good i That's, love liver that is the one thing i miss eating that I cannot find a substitute for is cream potatoes. Cream potatoes. That oh. is good. You know, I get accused, people say, well, day, you're so. a picky eater. And all I say is, do you eat liver? And they'll just turn green when I say that. But I love liver and and cream potatoes. She is a picky eater. She's very picky. Yes. She's a picky <laughs> Melinda. Oh, yeah, I got Melinda's. Paula. I want to know how to keep a notebook for prices. Okay, I will show you guys our price book on how to do it. <laughs> so our price book, livingonadime.com. You print it yourself. We were thinking about putting these in print again, but maybe we should actually. I'll call for you tomorrow and see how much it'll be to print them. Um, so... Okay, let's see. Can you see that? No. Can you get it closer? Nope. Okay. Let's try. Okay, there. So this is how. Now, so hold on, guys. So I have the food, and then I have three stores. Only compare three stores. Don't overwhelm yourself. So I write in the name of store number one, two, and three. So for me, it would be Wal Walmart, Ridley's, and Albertson's. The TH is Tara and Heidi. When I wrote this, my assistant Heidi, who lived in the Midwest at the time, gave me her prices also so that we could make sure that we had a good range of prices. And this is an average between her and I. And so then what I do is I write down the lowest price that I find it. Then when that price goes on sale for lower, I just erase it with a pencil. I just do it all in pencil and I just erase it and put the new lower price. Then I know when I see that new lower price, 
So like for me, hamburger, anything below $2.99 a pound for me is a really good deal. So like last week when it was $2.47, I got hamburger because I knew that was a really good deal. Now I will only buy hamburger for $2.47. Now, if I don't see hamburger for $2.47 for six months, then I'm going to have to raise my price back up to $2.99 and go again. And so don't get overwhelmed. No. Uh, just do a few things at first. Keep the prices mm -hmm. on a you know a handful of things. Do the main things you buy: meat, yeah. milk, eggs, and fruits and fruits. I would say. And I'll what else wash. happens is after you've done this for so long, you probably won't even need a price list. You need it to start out with yeah. to get you in the habit. Like, I have my prices memorized. Oh uh, yeah, I was gonna say I know everything. Yeah. I know what a banana costs mm -hmm. here, you yeah. know, or what that type of thing, or what hamburgers because you get so used to it, then you because yeah. you're looking at it every week. You're looking at the prices and you just get them memorized. Mm -hmm. Um, Deanna, let's uh, okay, hold on just oh, I just messed myself up again. Okay, let's see. Um, sorry guys. Deanna says, I received your email and I will get my stuff together and let you know when you're ready to send it to you. Yes, guys, if you guys want us to do a grocery audit for you, please go into the link in the description below. We are looking for people all over the world. We decided to open it up worldwide and, um, we will, um, be able to show you. I will tell you, I've had a couple of people that have said, I only eat organic. I only eat grass fed and all this. I'm not going to take those kinds because you're not going to be willing to save money, really. So you're choosing to eat organic and grass fed only. So with that choice comes the expense. So those are the only ones that I will turn away. But so far I have picked pretty much everybody. I had a couple of people uh, apply yesterday that I haven't gotten back to yet, but um. But I mean, if you're not willing to budge on anything, there's nothing I can help you with. So, but if you're willing to take some advice and have me just look at it, then yeah, we'll and, look at it for you. And don't you. be embarrassed, guys. Yeah. I, I said the last time when I go organize somebody's home, they put off having me come a lot of times because they were embarrassed for me to see what their kitchen looked like or their bedroom looked like. Don't give it a second thought. Everybody's looks like that at some point in their life. You know, it's no big deal. And so it's kind of like an alcoholic. You know, a lot of wow. alcoholics don't want to admit they're embarrassed to admit that I'm an alcoholic. But if they just say, yes, I'm an alcoholic. And then, yes, my name is Tara. I went to the PTA meeting and, and I am I'm now an alcoholic. alcoholic. <laughs> I am admitting that I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> And you then, can see right here. Oh, that's going to go all you, over the you internet. Can you know see what people are going right to say about here, you, the Tars and alcoholic. My vanilla. <laughs> but, you know, once they say, you know, once you get over the fact of being able to admit, you know, that I need to have this I need help. organized or I need help, it's like downhill from then. You've, you've overcome the biggest hurdle, you know. You're supposed to clap for me because I admitted I need help. <laughs> I don't hear clapping. clapping. You. I'm not, gonna clap I'm not going you. further until I hear clapping. <coughs> You're not going to get it. <laughs> Michael, I want to hear clapping. <laughs> oh. oh, the things I have to live right. with. PTA. Oh, People I have to okay. live with. Um. <clears throat> Let's see. Yes, Mama Bear, sign up for a grocery. But I, I've been nice to people, I think. Actually, yeah. I think people are doing pretty good. I was going to say, if you ask it's anybody not, that's yeah. done it, I think they've been really excited about yeah. it. They're so and thrilled I've a, that they've actually been able to start. You know what? The looks on some of their faces when they first start out talking, it's like deer in headlights type of thing. And then they'll take, and after the show's over, they'll try even one of the tips, and they are so excited, aren't they? I mean, they just, it's like... This worked. This really worked. So they keep wanting to try because a lot of times we get so discouraged and we feel like there's nothing I can change. There's nothing I can do. And we just want to give up. And if we give them one tip that helps, it's like it snowballs and gets them started. Yeah. yeah. Like Lynette, she says, Tara, I've cut my bubbly down to one to two cans a day. And she's now <laughs> drinking lemon. Yeah. Very good. Very You're good. getting there. See? 
Yeah, um, I, I get so tickled yeah. that they're trying these things. Okay, let me go back to the comments. But Tiffany said, do you count yourself in debt if you still owe uh, your house and your car? Yes, it's debt. You mm -hmm. have to pay the debt. She said she feels like those are kind of normal pill bills to have and 30 just trying to do the right things. No, nope. that is debt. Yeah. Get rid of it all. I do not. Mike and I have never, ever had. Well, no, I shouldn't say never, ever. We had $2,500 on our credit card one time when he drove off the cliff. But other than a $2,500 car that we had to buy, um, we have never had a car payment. We buy cars that we can only pay in cash, period. Only buy cars that we can pay in cash. Now, your house payment, yes. I'm okay with having a house payment, but not forever. You can mm -hmm. get your house paid off. There's no reason for you See, to have a house payment. What you're thinking is what a lot of people that are my age now thought, and now they're in a pickle because all that they're having is Social Security. And they say, well, this isn't fair or right. I can't live off of just this amount, you know. Mm -hmm. But I worked really hard in my, I had my house paid off by the time I was. Everybody keeps saying to mom, well, it must be nice to pay off your house. She lives rent free. No, because she worked her buns off for 25 years to pay her house off. I had my house paid off when I was 37. And stayed that way. Yeah. I Well, I had one I had to do. It was like 20 years. Okay. Well, I had just like a couple of thousand, I, thousand yeah. because I lost money on one house. So when I bought the yeah. other one, but I paid it off within like a year or two. So basically I've been no mortgage free since I was 37. And these people are my age and they're saying, well, like people that are in their thirties think, well, that's just part of having life is having a mortgage. Well, then they get arrive at 60 years old and they're in a panic. Now they've got a mortgage that they're still having to pay on and they don't have the money to pay it. They're, they're sick or they're elderly and they can't work. Now, what are they going to do? Well, then they feel sorry for themselves. No, you've got to get rid of everything as soon as possible. Yep. You know, there's no reason. I mean, while you're healthy yeah. and younger and can do mm -hmm. it, get rid of that house payment. Deb says, what is the point for me to save money if I get $391 a month in food stamps just for me? Holy cow. Where do you live? Well, no, that's true. People do get a lot. Of a money. lot of people are emailing me and they're saying they're mm -hmm. getting $50 a month for the family. So I don't know where no, she lives. I, I knew people that were getting like $500 a month okay, for like three or four crazy. people. I don't buy prepackaged foods. I eat mostly fruits, vegetables, dried beans, brown rice, oats, and tomatoes. So why would you, um, what's the point? Well, because if you ever lose your food stamps, if you would start buying some canned goods to yeah. stock up, then you will have a stockpile for that's, if you ever lose those food That's stamps. what I was going to say. I would take that extra money and stockpile the food as best as you can. Yeah. Because there's one day, I mm -hmm. hopefully there's one day you're going to go off food stamps. I hope that you're wanting to get a job, you know, yeah. and do that yeah. type of thing. I mean, if you're on disability or something, that's, that's different. Fine, yeah, that's but different. I mean, you know, um, Becca says the last PTA meeting I went to, we came home and opened a bottle of wine <laughs> <laughs> we'd had for a while. I'm telling you. And <laughs> Mackenzie said, did you say get it together, people, Tara, at the PTA? <laughs> oh, my goodness. I didn't. But I... I very loudly questioned why we're having two dances in two weeks. <laughs> well, these people, what I'm, I love you guys. If you're watching, <laughs> but it's ridiculous. But to they have want two dances in two weeks. Explain they want the parents to and volunteer one to of do the all dance, this stuff. One of the dances is a fundraiser for the school, which is a big to do for the community. Great thing. All the parents are supposed to be on deck for that. But they're like, well, you, the parents don't have to come to the dance for the other one. I'm like, no, but the parents have to decorate. They have to make food. They have to get clothes for the kids. They have to drive the kids. It's not like the parents are going to be doing nothing for this. <laughs> and since it's a two to one girl to boy ratio, <laughs> I know my imagine. boy's going to have to be there. <laughs> but still, it's. Jack's in a good position. He goes to a school where there's twice as many girls as boys. Well, <laughs> the numbers are going down. Last are year it was three to one. Oh, yeah. Now yes, it's two to yes. one this year. 
Um, okay, let's see. Julia says, I don't have a pantry, but we have everything in milk crates stand, stacked against the wall. That is great. Yeah. I have had to do that myself. Shelving, yep. anything like that. I have that. done mm -hmm. that. I just had shelving stacked against the wall. I've never really, this, this house I have, mm -hmm. I have two closets, but I never had a real official walk-in yeah. pantry or anything. Um, Molly Bear, what's the difference between homemade laundry soap and store detergent? I've read homemade soaps don't clean as well. Okay, so here's the thing on the homemade soaps. Dining on a Dime, Volume 1. Livingonadime.com is the recipe for homemade laundry soap. Living on a Dime on YouTube, we have homemade. Uh, that was our second video we ever did. Mm -hmm. That was our second video we ever did. I forgot about that. Okay, mm -hmm. we're going to put the link in there. I, I'm going to go get it here. I forgot about that. That mm -hmm. was our second video, I think. Oh, no. Our third video we ever did. <laughs> our third <laughs> Would video. Would we do the candy wreath? Was that one of them too? Candy wreath was the second one. Okay, here <laughs> it is. If you guys want to, if you guys want a good laugh. Oops, now I'm talking. Oh my good. Oh, look at me. Oh my <laughs> goodness. This is embarrassing. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> I was just a sprightly young thing, wasn't I? You were like a teenager. <laughs> okay, don't go and watch it right now. Go watch it afterwards. But <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it doesn't really have anything to do with the soap, except that different waters in different areas are going to determine why your homemade laundry soap won't work. So my homemade laundry soap worked fine in Colorado where we didn't have any minerals because our water came from the mountains. In Kansas, where our water came up from underneath the ground, we had tons of minerals and it didn't clean as well. So that's why. I would make up so, a small batch and just see, see what it does, you know. Try it and see. For the $10 in supplies that it costs, and it's a lot of those supplies trying. you can use even if yeah. the laundry detergent doesn't work. You can use it later. Yeah. Uh, okay. Send me the next batch, Mike. Uh, Letitia says Safeway had its eggs on sales for $1.27. Yep, mm. they mm -hmm. sure did. Lori wants to know who cooks in our house. It's me. I do 90% of the cooking. Lori, yo, answered that one. Denise says, I was looking for good lasagna recipe. Uh, that's because lasagna is not cheap. So I don't. I didn't. I did not put a lasagna recipe in either of the books because it's not cheap to make lasagna. So yeah, Heather says, "Isn't the fitted sheet the number one video on a, on our YouTube channel?" Yes, it is. It's our number one video. <laughs> Elaine says, "In Florida, how do I store my potatoes? I put them in the cabinet and dark, and they get wrinkly. Go bad. You could put them in their own." a uh, drawer in their fridge in the refrigerator too that would probably florida have, the thing is yeah. with potatoes it needs to be kind of dry and yeah. florida is really hard for humidity you You're know just toast so, yeah you, know, <laughs> you may just dehydrate them you could dehydrate them yeah i dehydrate them uh cook them up and then shred mm -hmm. them and make them into hash browns or you know sliced potatoes or something like that okay jim and everyone else are liking my zinnias. Yes, these are. Oh, my I wish zinnias. you guys could see her yard. Yeah. Oh my goodness! I actually in oh. about a week a video is coming out. But here I have to show you just because they're so beautiful. Aren't those they're beautiful? huge? She had some that were like four or five feet tall. <laughs> I'd never seen zinnias that big before. That tall. Yep. It's just like solid flowers in color. So I think next. Wednesday or Friday's video, you guys are going to see those. And Julia, so is the oat milk is going to be in Friday's video that's coming up. We're doing part two of Gina's grocery audit and the oat milk will be in there. Laura, buy frozen shrimp on sale one time a year for a treat. Yep, very mm -hmm. good. Becca, Wanda, uh, she's telling Wanda she uses Kroger's cell paper. Yes, and picked it up on delivery. Very good. That's one thing too. Some of this stuff, like the shrimp, you know, do the stuff for treats. That doesn't mean never, ever, ever have it again, but don't make it a regular staple. And you'll enjoy it even more when you yeah. do it that way, too. Oh, huh. Some people are saying use bacon grease for pie crust and it's kind of like the lard browns. type of thing. Well, it is lard. Yeah. It is. It's just not clarified, clarified yeah. lard. So it is. And bacon grease tortillas, that would be really good, too. So yeah, mm -hmm. those are all really good ideas. Um, let's see. Mackenzie, oh, we look so cute. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. You, <laughs> oh, uh, you should have seen me getting ready before I came. Thank you very much. Yeah, you could have seen me after the PTA meeting. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Just saying. 
Hello, my name is Tara. I am now an alcoholic <laughs> after this meeting. Oh my she goodness. said she kept filling her mouth full of mints so she wouldn't say anything. Hey, <laughs> now, dear, yes. I kept my mouth shut, didn't I? She did. Aren't you proud of me? Sorry, I was trying to get my mic on. I was amazed. <laughs> I was truly amazed, dear. You did a good job. <laughs> You could see this yeah. name yeah. coming out. <laughs> what happened when we got home? Oh. <laughs> no, we didn't even make it home. We actually came out the door. And it's a really good thing our car was not hurt by anyone else's car. Wow. Yeah, right. Yeah, actually, but but once she got home, I'd say the last hour before bed, she wound herself up really, really tight. <laughs> Actually, the more I thought about it, the angrier I got. As a matter of fact, I'm talking to the principal, so that's how mad I got. But I'm like, well, they did other things besides the dance stuff. It yeah, wasn't. no, the dance. Oh, the yeah. dance was the least the of the least of the things. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> watch this show so i have this has been very good for me keeping my mouth shut <laughs> it's been very good i am learning um, they would be like wow you call that keeping your mouth shut <laughs> i need to see it when she really goes off um Di uh, Emily says, I put the paper towels under the kitchen sink and oh my, what a difference. Out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. Very good. That's, that's, where that's a are. great suggestion. Yeah. 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 I think we're just, people are so much in the habit. And I've watched people too. They're so much in the habit. They don't even know what they're doing. I saw a couple of friends. They had the paper towels on the spinny roll thing and they just yanked it. And they probably pulled off five or six just to wipe their hands. And I'm standing there just, you know, gasping. I don't even have mine on a roller thing or anything. Mm -hmm. Mine's in the cabinet, or, you know, out, yeah. of, out of sight. And Diana says, we're calling it the Tara Challenge. No paper towels. This <laughs> week, so far, good. <laughs> Very good. Emily and I got a water, reasonably priced water filter, and I'm going to try it once to drink filtered tap water. Good. Mm -hmm. Oh, she can't keep buying water at $30 a month <laughs> for water? You know, guys, try this wow. first. If you don't have a water filter, too, try this first. I just fill a jug up. A glass jug is better, but I do use a plastic one. Yeah. And put it in the refrigerator, even just overnight, and let it get it cold. All the stuff that the filter does for the filtered water, that all goes away just sitting in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. Just try that, you know. I think you'd be pleasantly surprised. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Oh, Gabby. Okay. <laughs> Gabby says she's very determined to eat only from her pantry and freezer. <laughs> very, good. Goes out. very good. And I want an update and I want to <laughs> yes. see it. You I guys know we it. want an update. And I'll make it worth your time. <laughs> I'll make it worth your time. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Mm, that's good. Uh, Kathy, this is but, my... Okay. I don't mean to interrupt you, but... I could hear the excitement, yes. you know, and that's what I love about it. They come on a lot of times, you know, like, is there any hope or is this going to work? And you then as soon as the show's over, the excitement in their comments or their voice mm -hmm. is really something. Yeah, I'm I think so, you're going to do good. I, I do, too. You. And I'm going to go look for your tamale recipe. Well, you know, there. all of you guys that listen to us, I think mm -hmm. you do fine because uh, you wouldn't be on here listening. And when you try it, you know. It, this is reasonable stuff to do, and you usually can do it. So Kathy says this is our first time live, and she loves all the ideas. Oh, thank you. thank you. And Heather says, I hit like and such. Thank you. Yes, guys, oh, when you hit that you. thumbs up underneath the video right here, like right here, I think. When you hit that, that tells YouTube you love us, and that helps us even more. Mm -hmm. We are trying to get to 400,000 subscribers, so if you're not subscribed, please subscribe also. They and, send it out more, mm -hmm, you know, yeah. and pop it up yeah. on the screens and stuff. More, and let so. me tell you, people need it. As a matter of fact, I got people. <laughs> I have people. I don't know what to do about this. I'm not going to do it, I don't think. But they are sending me other YouTubers that they're wanting me to do audits. on other <laughs> <YouTubers>. <laughs> But here's the problem. 
Those YouTubers don't know it. <laughs> those YouTubers that are spending a thousand dollars a week, they're no dummy. They're making like a million dollars in ad revenue. Mm -hmm. They're not stupid. They're doing that because they're getting paid showing you a thousand dollar grocery mm -hmm. haul. That that's but that's you know not dumb. What that's scares smart. me is that's people business. are following them. You know, I wouldn't take them as advice. I wouldn't but use they their are. advice. People are just because but, they're on YouTube, they're following yeah. them. You know, not but they're on YouTube. But they're but you know. they're using their grocery hauls as a business expense. And that's really smart on their part. So, yeah. you know, but, um, okay. Let's see. Is there a sub for dry mustard? I don't think there's a sub, Wanda, for dry mustard. Well, I would just go. Don't we have something in the book? Not dry mustard. No, you can make but mustard. But could you make? Yeah. No, she's dry mustard. Oh, okay. The powder. The powder that you use no, in you the make, mustard. Yeah, we have mustard recipes, how to make mustard well, with don't you the just mustard grow powder. It? Don't you grow mustard? Not all. I think it's a I think it's a warm weather plant. I don't think you can grow it everywhere. Oh, well, yeah. So, but you can yeah. grow it. If you I don't think everybody area. can grow it. But yeah. I mean, I think if you live in a tropical area, you can. I don't oh. know. I don't know for sure. Amory says, I use reusable grocery bags to store things that are chest freezer. That's good. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Frugal, uh, let's see. Fugly old man says, unless you have an immaculate palate, just use your basics. I'm retired chef. Do not buy into the lots of spices. Yes. Very good. Thank Tennessee you. Valley yeah. says, here in the South, bacon and greases are gold. Yes, it is. Yes. My family is from um kentucky kentucky that's why we're southern that's why we say warsh and squash and that's why we use bacon grease because my family is originally from kentucky well grandma's not but grandpa is so grandma's from iowa but we're, we're a combination Midwest. and we've yeah. we've lived in southern states i've lived in a lot of southern mm -hmm. states and had southern friends i only made it in texas six months southern sorry southern texans I love you guys. I love Texas so the people in Texas. I so, married I the handsomest the Texan people. right there. Look at that <laughs> smiling face. But <laughs> it's just no the more heat. Texas for me. <laughs> it's just the heat. Um, Tina says she loves liver and potatoes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, Wynette says, is mayonnaise okay? to use if it says it's expired but has never been opened okay only if it's like less than six months expired what's that mayonnaise i would not oh, use mayonnaise, mayonnaise. Yeah, mayonnaise is one and if you I'm open like... it and it smells anything other than mayonnaise don't use it yeah or the top is bulging or the little seal thing is bulging unless you live in the mountains altitude does that but if you live normal people not mountain people then the top should not be bulging it should smell fine and it should be less than six months expired. It's got eggs in it. And yeah. so that's usually a more iffy. Salad mm -hmm. dressings, creamy salad dressings are a little bit more iffy yeah. too. Um, Nancy says she loves our price book. It's in our store, guys. It's so easy to use. You know what? Are you guys still on here? You guys are still on here. So here's what I'm going to do. I got a deal for you. I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to go put our price book for free if you're still on here for 24 hours only. Mike, don't don't have a cow back there. Mike's having <laughs> a cow. See his face. He's having a cow. He's having a cow. I Get the see. price book link, dear. I'm getting it changed right here. Just a second. Um, or not if I can't find it. Oh my yes. goodness, we have a lot of ebooks. I know we have a lot. You guys. <laughs> okay. So you know, I don't. I know I sound like a sales. I got it. I know I sound like a salesperson, but we've got tons of ebooks and i like the ebooks better than everything you yeah. know so if you haven't tried our ebooks no. all right mike it is all free kinds now. of subjects it should be free now we've got on laundry on mm -hmm. organizing on kids on yeah. all kinds of subjects so so if you guys have stayed this long i just put the price book for free see you guys you need to watch all the video mm -hmm. you never know when yep. i'm gonna be putting something for free <laughs> and then you're gonna say oh i missed the deal so today is september 20th it will be free until september 21st first at 11 59 p.m or we wake up <laughs> because we don't change things in the middle of the night okay uh, <laughs> sorry i'll just let you guys have it free for a few more hours um okay Tammy says the date on your food is not the expiration date. It's a sell-by date. Most, most of the time, 
But things like mayonnaise and salad dressings, it's an expiration date. Yeah. Um, Crystal says, both. by the time I get to the store, the sale items are gone. We live in the highest growth area in the country. Not enough stores here. So that's why you go at the in the morning at the beginning of the sale. And listen, if you're that dedicated to it, even if you're working, you will get up at six o'clock in the morning, go get your sales and go before work. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be even a if dork you have to go this, a couple but... times. Like I would drive past my store going to work. So if yeah. I had to, and only had a little bit of time, I would get a part of, get yeah. part of the sales. But usually there's not that many sales. You know that I yeah. even when I had a family. But you can go twice or three times a week then on your way to work. Another thing is check your store. You might be able to get a um, rain check. Mm -hmm. Our yeah, store does a rain, rain check. Yeah. Our gives a rain and check on the sale. I didn't tell this to Gabby. If you're still listening, you need to calculate how much you're saving by going and buying the sales and how many hours are you working for that? I bet you could probably come close to quitting your part-time job by just shopping the ads, cutting down on your cleaning supplies. And I bet we could find some other stuff for you to cut too. And you could probably quit your job. Um, but count how many hours you're working to pay the extra amount. So like if you're making $20 an hour and you save just a hundred dollars, that's four, no, that's six less hours, six to seven less hours, depending on what your tax bracket is that you have to work to pay for that. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot. Um, Okay. Nikki says, I could use some organization really bad. Also, I should stop and just eat what I have. Yeah, I'm actually mm -hmm. noticing a trend here. Yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah. And we have another video coming up. I can't remember who it was. Was it Annie maybe? I can't remember. And I was like, oh, girl, <laughs> this is going to be a good video. Because people are not eating their stockpile. They're just stocking and stocking and stocking. No, it's a constant rotation. Because I kept wondering, why do we keep getting questions mm -hmm. on expiration dates? Expiration mm -hmm. dates, Because I don't have a problem with it because I have the pantry, you know, my closet organized and I just move things forward, move things forward. I can see what I have, what I don't have, you know. Mm -hmm. And yep. so we saw there's something going on here. So now we're finding out people just don't, well, even like with the freezer chest, I, everybody for years, I've seen known people with freezer chest and they're just, everything's just dumped in there. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't have a freezer chest and you're thinking about buying a uh, freezer, I would recommend an upright one more so than, get a chest no, don't get a chest. They're very hard on your back. Mm -hmm. The older you get to have to bend over and do that. Even when I had little kids and I had carried kids all the time, my back was a little bit weaker and to have to bend over into a chest to get that out. So I would recommend an up, even a small upright, uh, upright chest, a mm -hmm. freezer, not the chest because the, you yeah. just can't keep track of things. Yeah. Even if they're a freezer chest, a uh, chest is cheaper in the long run, it's not cheaper for the amount of food that gets buried and wasted in there. Laura wants to know why Mike's outside. <laughs> we couldn't stand to have him in the room with us. <laughs> it's a green screen and it's a running joke now that Mike's in a different place every time. Now going. That's Sherry back there. <laughs> is it really? Oh, yeah, it is. It is it? Sheridan. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Don't tell him that. It looks too pretty, Shh, Michael. Stop. <laughs> we get a lot of snow. Yeah, we get a lot. Feet. I had four and I'm, of course, we, I'm not we joking. We did have I four, four feet out feet here. Snow all winter all long. Winter. We had I mean, four feet out here in all my winter. yard. It was a, I have very uh, big windows on my living room. And it was above my windows all winter. I mean, above the, you know. We're not exaggerating here. Window. It really was that bad last winter. It was really poor. Water days. bucket says you'll be proud, Tara. I normally buy Simply Truth organic chicken today. I saw Heritage Chicken for 99 cents a pound. Good job. Very good. Good job. Good job. You'd be surprised how just these little tiny changes start making a big difference, you know, for you. Claudia says I buy clearance meat and freeze it immediately. Good mm -hmm. job. Yep. Yep. And boy, I should use some how to organize some stuff in general. You know, El Electro Trio. I don't know how to say that. Every single show, I never remember. But anyway, E C L A I R T R E O. You know who you are. I need to just come to your house. 
<laughs> I don't know where you live. You need to email, email me and tell me where you live. I might just come to your house. Peggy says, I love your show. You two and Mike are hilarious. Oh, no, thank you. Are you hilarious, my love? <laughs> I wasn't so hilarious after the PTA meeting no. last night. <laughs> Uh, what are those called? Those uh, emojis? What is it when yes, you were sending me? I had steam coming out of my GFIs head emojis. or whatever on my Emo phone. I kept getting these pictures from Tara. Oh, <laughs> I finally said, do you want to talk about it now or in the morning what happened? <laughs> Let's see. What was my emoji that I sent? Did I send what? one? The oh, the, I'll keep my mouth shut. Yeah, how to keep? I didn't mouth keep shut. my mouth shut though. I didn't. I tried. But, uh, you lasted longer than ever before, though. <laughs> that's not saying much, Michael. I actually wrote on the calendar. They told us when the next PTA meeting is, and I wrote on the calendar. Tara, do not go. <laughs> I wrote it on the calendar, didn't I, dear? Well, we were having like a hymn sing last night at church, and I kept I saying, I gone. you should have went to church instead. You should have went to church. But, but nope, half the church goes nope, to school. What I am I supposed to do? church goes to school. I told her, you know, you don't like the, the meetings. You should just never go. <laughs> I just wrote. I did never go to go. PTA meetings. I offered to go I alone. I didn't either until now because I was trying to be supportive, but I'm done. <laughs> I offered I'm to go alone. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry, guys. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, back to the question. I'm going to get an earful tomorrow when I drop Jack off, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, one more, dear. Elaine, Ellen says PTA meeting is the same class as HOA. I know, and we got done early, and then <laughs> they just drug it on. It is I'm like shutting my no. I got it. I got a cough drop. My mouth is shut. <laughs> Water bucket says I found you through your soap making videos. Well, thank you. Yeah, that's that is pretty cool. Cool. Um. Okay. <clears throat> We've got a recipe for homemade soap Kimmy! in the book, yes. don't we? Yes, I put the homemade soap in volume two. And I also have a soap making e-course, a full course on how to make soap. Mm -hmm. Kimmy, Kimmy, oh, Kimmy, answer me. I thought Kimmy and I should do audits of each other. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? <clears throat> and then I'll do audits of both of you. <laughs> I think we should. Oh. Rob, hello, Rob. Little House <laughs> Off Grid. Rob, email me and tell me where you live again, because we're headed that direction. I don't know if it's on the way or not. Mike and I were debating. And He's I not going to email. He He's knows like, you're going to stop by. We'll keep, we'll keep the undisclosed location to our, ourselves. <laughs> or from Wyoming, we're good at that. Yeah, we're from Wyoming, we're good at that. Yeah, we are. Um, Mackenzie said, I'm sure you said, well, the parents were thinking, yes, because I texted a couple of them afterwards. <sighs> sorry, I didn't. Sorry. I'm keeping my mouth shut. <laughs> you guys think that would be fun? Would Kimmy me say anything? Uh, sure, she says. Okay, never mind. I won't do a grocery <laughs> audit with you. Uh, I thought that would be a great idea. All right. Um, Kathy says, Jan from New York City does good videos on food storage. She lives in a small apartment. Yeah, I've lived in small apartments. Mm -hmm. You can do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Brady says, we don't have city sewer. Would homemade clothes detergent hurt our sewage system? It shouldn't. I mm -hmm. used it on my septic system. So people want a yard tour. Thank you. Ellen wants to know, I am in zone four for growing. So not, it's really from the 1st of June until the 1st of October. It's sketchy. So the, la the years that we've been here so far, we've gotten to the end of October. But Colorado had snow September 12th, the newest, um, or the, a record for the, for the earliest snow, September 12th. And they're expecting snow in the mountains here on Friday. This Friday. Mm -hmm. But remember the first, when I moved into my house, it was the second week of October, we got snow because I just moved mm -hmm. in. Okay. So, yeah. Um, Claudia says, I think I learned it from us but making my own pre-wash with peroxide and soap. Yep, mm -hmm. that is volume one, I think. I think that's volume one. Susan just watched our old video <laughs> making laundry detergent. 
Um, <laughs> Susan, I haven't bought paper towels in almost two years. Yay. Very it's not good. that hard. And she has three cats. You go. Yeah. That's great. Yep. That's great. Um, Heather's. Did we, yeah, did, go ahead. did we do a video on rags? Me mm -hmm. cutting the rags and everything. Yeah, we got a video on so that. So if you want to know how to we do work with rags, mm -hmm. you know, type in uh, rags after the show's over with on our video stuff. And yep. Um, Heather says she learned about tight living on a dime through Tightwad Gazette. Actually, I don't think that's possible. I think she learned about the Tightwad Gazette through Living on a Dime, I think, because the Tightwad Gazette was closed up after we started. That's why I started, actually, because she said people kept asking her to do it. So I thought, oh, well, I'll just carry on. <laughs> Little did I know what I was getting myself into. <laughs> Susan says you need your cowboy hat, dear. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tiffany, I've been on edge about getting a Sam's Club membership and I live alone. Don't know if you guys thought it would be worth it. It's a huge waste of money. Mm -hmm. It's a huge waste of money. Yeah. A checkout. We have a video on warehouse stores, stores and shopping there. What happens, especially if you're by yourself, that so much of the packaging, you have to buy, you know, huge amounts of the stuff. And, uh, yeah. you know, like I know people that have bought ketchup and sour cream in these big containers and you throw most of it away is what happens. It spoils before you can use it yeah. up. And so and then you buy when you go in there, you see all these good deals. So then you buy more than you went in for. So everything about it is just like, you know, um, uh, adds up to you really don't save anything in the I end. asked another YouTuber if she wanted to do me to do an audit. I kind of figured she wouldn't. I don't blame her. Cuz I about spit out my tea when she went to Sam's. And I kid you not, the stuff didn't even fit on my stove here and it was $386. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, "Oh well, my goodness." And two, but I mean she's not she didn't say anything about saving money or anything. So she, I'm not like trying to bash her. They maybe don't need to save money, but um, it does not save no. money. And even like we were there one, one time we went to, was it Costco, I think, or Sam's, one or the other. And first time we, I think we had a free thing to yeah. go in there or whatever. So we tried it and we went in and these gals were all running to one aisle really fast. Oh, come look at this Clorox. Look at this Clorox. You get three of them for uh, $3. And they were so excited. What a good deal. You get these this Clorox for three of them for three dollars. Tar and I just come from Walmart and we've gotten the same size bottles and everything. Of Clorox. 97 cents. Yeah, for 97 cents. So we got we would have gotten it for like nine cents cheaper. And so the thing is, they think because things are bundled together and they don't know their prices. That's why we push the price list being so important. They think they were getting a good deal for some reason, you know, seeing stuff bundled together and you're getting more, more does not always mean it costs less. You have to do your numbers on those things. Kimmy says she found this from the folded fit. She, she the folded a, fit. And she can't fold one. Oh, Kimmy. Kimmy. I would have practiced with you when I, I am when coming I to Dallas you. and I'm going to rip uh, that sheet off the bed and show you. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Seriously? It's so easy. It's so easy. Oh, okay. Next time we meet up, I'm going to show you how to fold a fit sheet. It's so easy. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that'll be a ride to see one. you guys do the new. Homeschool Mama wants to know how long do Ritz Crafters last after the uh, date she has... From June, eat them. They're not going to, June is fine. Yeah. Oh, that's like yeah. two months. Three I months. had, I was going to say, I had some that's almost a year yeah. old. And you can eat them. And mm -hmm. what happens with crackers, they're, they just have like a little bit of flavor change. And when that happens, then you know they're no good any longer. Yeah. Uh, Lynette wants to know what's the slosh skis rolls in here. It It's like a um, deli roll. It, it was a um, sub shop that I don't know, maybe they're not around maybe anymore. It is it I still around? I think they're just in Kansas. Google it and see, but it used to be a deli sh deli shop. And so that was the buns for that. Um, let's see. Uh, hair tight. We stock food for adult children for an emergency. Okay. Uh, well, it depends on how you're doing that. If you're doing it because you expect them to possibly have to come to your house to stay for a little while for an emergency, like the anniversary of the Colorado floods was 10 years ago this week. And um, so if it's something like that, 
If you're talking well, an emergency just because your kids don't have their act together, well, you know, they kind of need to get their act well, together. Well, like, see, I keep extra thinking you guys might have to come over and see yeah, like if something happens over. to your house or yeah. they. So we, something like that's not, not bad. Yeah. What tar, what tar's talking about is a lot of kids refuse to, they're spending their money on other things, you know, mm -hmm. car payments and going out to eat all this stuff. And they're expecting you to come through mm -hmm. then in an emergency. And you have, that's a real hard call, but you might, if it's, if it's a, if it's a sacrifice for you and you're having to work at it and go into debt to do this, I would not advise mm -hmm. doing it. Yeah. You know, if your kids have money enough that they can do it themselves then let them do it. Um, Kimmy says, if it'll get me to Dallas. <laughs> <She'll> <laughs> Kimmy, it's in two weeks. I can't go now. <laughs> um, okay. Let's see. Do we have anything else, Mike? Because I think I have got the... Oh, Claudia says she thought Mike was auditioning for The Sound of Music. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I find that so funny? I'm sorry. <laughs> With the sound of music. Oh. <laughs> Aren't you guys glad I didn't pop in and start singing too? See what PTA meetings do to me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you imagine me at the HOA? Oh, that was really bad. I went to two. <laughs> that was it. Two. Mm -hmm. I couldn't, I could not handle it. Mike doesn't um, take her out very uh, often any place. <laughs> Uh, that is Tara Heidi. So my assistant who helped me with that, she lived in um, Minnesota. And so we did an average of my price and her price. And so that's how we came up with that's our averages. That's just an example, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's yes. just, an, just example an example You don't prices. need to do those exact things. That's just an example. Everybody kept asking me what my target prices are. And I would say probably, I need to update it, but probably I would say add 50 cents to everything now for the newer, higher prices now. But it's just to show so, you how to fill yeah. out your own. Yeah. And so um, I'll, if, if I decide to put this in print, I'll update that with the, with my new prices now. Cause like now, so like here, well, no, cold cereal, 16 cents an ounce. That's what I still pay. Bagels are still $1.15. Uh, burger buns and hot dog buns, 99 cents. Now it's like $1.30. Uh, loaf of bread instead of 99 cents is $1.30. Eggs is still 99 cents a dozen. Cream cheese is still 99 cents. Actually, not a lot of these has changed. Yeah. Butter has gone up from $1.99 to $2.50. I get it for $2.49. Um... But yeah, I mean, about three quarters of the prices haven't really changed for their sale prices. Um, okay. Are you going to have guest speakers? I don't know. We might. We'll see. Um, I don't know if we will or not. But that might be fun to do sometimes. Hello, Gina in Louisiana. Thank you for joining us for your first time. Oh, hi. Uh, Kimmy says, I can't handle PTA or IEP meetings. I get unhinged. Oh, man, girlfriend. <laughs> it turned me into a drinking woman yesterday. <laughs> Not really, but still. <sighs> Living on a dime. Mike says, I'm battle hardened for PTA. I used to work for the city council. No kidding. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Could. <laughs> Could you, said, you? you said seven hour meetings. <laughs> seven you? hour meetings. City council meeting. Oh. <laughs> I did city council and county commission, but the city council was seven hours for a typical meeting. Holy moly. Oh, man, that's bad. That's really bad. Okay. Go check out our cookbooks, guys. 25% off right now. Livingonadime.com. Thank you for joining us. We will see you bye next bye, week guys. live. And we then have a new video on Friday.